podcast for Fife fans, music artists, and creatives alike. It's the Green Skull Podcast. Today we got Angel Chavez, Coachella Angel. So, so, so. That's good. <laughs> Thank you for inviting me, bro. Yes, sir. You know, I mean, but we can get, get into like those... Uh, like the festivals or the local shows but i, I also want to get into like your start with youtube and like how you got into making content and you know f- like this kind of like start from the beginning yeah. and we'll dribble in you know yeah for sure so yeah so how'd you get started with all that with videos yeah with content creating damn so back in 2007 I started in 2007, Ooh. technically, bro. 2007, Damn. dog. So you're an OG. I'm an OG, bro. bro. I, I'm from the era of YouTube where, like, people were just to upload just, like, dog videos and, like, funny, like, Charlie bit my like finger. Like, how-tos? Like, how to clean your car or something? No, <laughs> way before that, bro. Way before that? It was that? more like, oh, you could upload funny videos to this website, and then and then people would just put, like, funny cat videos and funny dog videos, funny, Damn. like, people falling. Like, the shit you would see on oh, America's Funny is uh, home videos, but like people, people would upload those to YouTube. Oh, uh, yeah, like people can get And then, then it was shit. like Ray William Johnson equals three. I don't know if people remember that shit. Those, those, that era was dope. So, anyway, um, yeah. but I didn't start on YouTube. Like, I'm going to be a creator. It was like, I did a project for the Indio High School, like media production so or something like that. Because they had a film class where they teach you Final Cut Pro and everything. But I didn't, I never took that one. I took the, the other one that was making videos for the morning announcements. Oh, shit. Okay. And in my very first video, I had to go record the Bell game. You know, you you went the to Bell India. game. It's a uh, CB versus Indio. So oh, Coachella okay. Valley High School versus Indio High School. It's like the biggest rivalry game in the valley. There's sometimes they get like five thousand people show up to those games. But it's Let's crazy. go. So <laughs> that one, um, I went to record it as a freshman in high school. I made the edit. They played it in the morning announcements, and then I had the video, and I had a, and I was like, "Fuck, I'm uploaded to YouTube." That was my first upload to them. Damn, so that's what's up. The video's still there. Okay. Sick. Thirteen. I don't know how many years ago. Fifteen years ago. No. Fuck. I don't know. So, like, just from there, you just got into content creation or, you know? No, so from 2007 to 2011, that was my high school years, the four years. So, I graduated 2011. I uploaded, like, more football videos, Call of Duty videos. I uploaded um, just random videos with our friends, like, some skits that are, like, so terrible and shit. Oh, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Like, the worst. That's what's up, though. (laughs) You know, we were just doing stupid shit. Yeah. And then, like, in in college, um, I went to COD. I was playing football there. Uploaded maybe a couple videos randomly there. And then um, 2014 and 2015, I was driving a lot for work. I was going out of town to, like, Ontario, Anaheim, all the um, Orange County. And six-hour commutes, bro. Like, music got boring to me. Like, just music all day. I was like, fuck, let me – I started my homie. um, Yeah. The homie Ryan, he invited me to – or he showed me podcasts. Joe Rogan and like other podcasts like Dan Carlin and shit back in the day. And the, a lot of the sponsors were audible. It's like, oh, you could get free audiobooks. So it was podcasts and audiobooks in the six hours I was driving. Just boom. Yeah. I get what you mean. Like when time drags, like music's just not enough. It's better to like learn something and like, you know, find your interest through podcasts and like videos and stuff like that. That's yeah. It's just like, not that it's wasted time, but. So it's just like, fuck, I'm just driving here, like just sitting yeah. in your own head. So learning some shit and it feels good. Like it's good. Yeah. You're learning something while you're doing something else. Like people consume podcasts. People probably listening to this are working right now and shit. Hell so, yeah. Some meta sharing. That's <laughs> <it>. <laughs> yeah. So um, then I was watching videos. It was 2015. I was watching YouTube videos. Which book should I get next? So I was watching book Ooh. reviews, book reviews. And then I got I was just listening to a lot of books and Audible that I got to the point where I was like, Shit, why didn't I make reviews too? I already have a YouTube channel. Okay, Boom, I okay. started doing book reviews, bro. So that's when I started wanting to be a creator was fucking book reviews. Book reviews? Dang. I started uh, following when you were doing reaction videos to like, uh, was it Game of Thrones? Yeah, reaction I videos. I did a few reaction. So it, it was kind of like, I guess you go to this rabbit hole like of like um, media, I guess. So book reviews, then it got to... Trailer reactions, movie reviews, um, shit like that. And then I even did Funko Pop videos because you're looking at all your Funkos. 
I, I did some. F- uh, I have a few Funko Pop videos. I don't know if you've seen them. I don't think I've seen those, but now, now I kind of want to. <laughs> I want to check them out. Yeah, you know? it was like 2016. I used to get the DC Legion of Collectors, like the oh, monthly shit. subscription. Um, Bro, to be honest, like I haven't even been that far into Funko Pops. Like 2016, shit. I didn't even know that was like a thing. Yeah, 2016, time. bro. To me, this is like brand new. 2017. I had no idea. Yeah, there's those were like the transition when everything was fucking starting mainstream like crazy, bro. Like, I I, I remember going to Frankenson, and I I used to collect Yu Gi Oh back in the day, Yu Gi Oh cards. I used oh, yeah. to play, go to Franken, <laughs> go to tournaments. I went to regionals and fucking all kinds of shit. Like, I went to Long Beach with some homies. Oh shit, that was like two thousand people for some Yu Gi Oh. Yu Gi Oh tournament. Hell bro. yeah. It That's what's up, bro. Shit. Yeah, I grew up watching Yu-Gi-Oh too. That's like one of my. If I had to put a top ten, Yu-Gi-Oh's there, bro. Yeah, it's, it's a top it's anime the OG right there. It's, it's it's better than Pokemon when it comes to the the actual cartoon, bro. Like the storylines are badass. Yeah, Actually, hell yeah. Pokemon is cool, but it's kind of like the same shit. Nothing ever gets accomplished. Yeah, Yu-Gi-Oh's like it's got like evil <laughs> people and like fucking t- they take hell your soul yeah. and shit. <laughs> <laughs> like you lose, you finna die. Yeah, <laughs> like it's it's dark over there. It's not about like catching something. But it's cool though. Like Yu-Gi-Oh, I feel like Yu-Gi-Oh gave you like the, like the start of learning how to like, I guess communicate in like a confrontational way. At least for me when I was growing up. Like, not to say like you're gonna take somebody's life points or some shit, but like, <laughs> you know, like you kind of know what to say. You know. Yeah. That's cool though. It, it's shit. problem solving too. So um, it's like playing chess. So you might we both have the same forty cards. Mm-hmm. But, you know, like, it takes... If we both have the same 40 cards, but you might be better duelist, you could be... Yeah. Like, that's that's why it was popular, too, because it's it, it, it definitely took skill. But then it, it just kept evolving, the because the actual card game, like, it just... Bigger, they kept bigger, adding, they kept adding like, new new rules, new rules, new types of cards. So it, it wasn't just magic or spell cards and trap cards. Then there was, like, um, synchro monsters and XYZs and... Pendulum summoning, like they just kept adding more ways of just summoning way monsters, more. <laughs> and it got too crazy. Bef- now you don't even have to be the better duelist if you have the better cards, you win. Pretty that, much. So that's yeah. how, it, it's like a pay to play. So yeah, Konami they they release new cards every like three to four months, so it just keeps like people coming back. And then if you don't have the new fucking format cards, you're not gonna <laughs> be able to win because it's kind of a wrap. It, yeah. So, <laughs> so it's wait, like, did it just you actually keeps duel you like competitively? Yeah. Oh shit! I thought you were just going to attend. Like you actually like, like. No, I, I wasn't that bad. I never had the baddest cards. I, I never oh wanted, okay. Yeah, so I had good cards, I mean, but that's still, that's you. Shit. If you wanted to actually win, you had to have some badass shit. So I was, I was like a, a mid, mid dueler and shit. Oh okay, okay. But damn. For, I was, I was in it for a while. So God, I actually, damn, that's cool, bro. <laughs> I sold all my Yu-Gi-Oh cards um, at Frankenson, and that's when I saw the evolution going back to Funko Pops. I went to sell my Yu-Gi-Oh cards. I was like, where am I gonna sell them? Well, Frank and Son, they have all this shit. So I sold everything, and then I saw Funko Pops there. Hell yeah. Then I was like, what the fuck? Like, what are these? <laughs> um, because when I sold my Yu-Gi-Oh cards, I was like, fuck, I'm going to buy some Lord of the Rings. Like, those cool, like, live-action statues. Those, yeah, those, yeah. The, yeah. Like, the big ones? Yeah, like, those badass, like, super detailed and shit. Fuck yeah. And um, everything was, like, super expensive because Lord of the Rings was, like, everybody fucking liked that show or that movie, that trilogy. So... I saw on Amazon there was like a Funko Pop of the female elf from the uh, the Hobbit movies. Man, I don't even know to be honest. I don't know, bro. I have no idea. Talking about some nurturing, <laughs> taking you back. I'm not even gonna lie, like I I know of Game of Thrones, but I've never watched. No, no, Lord of the Rings, Lord of the Rings. Oh, Lord of the Rings, not even that. You never seen I, Lord of the Rings. I've never seen Lord of the Rings, bro. You never seen the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Oh never, bro. I think I've only seen the Damn. ending of one of them. <laughs> like that's it, bro. We watch that shit every year during like uh, like holidays. Damn. That you was see our, how I get both Christ- of them that was mixed our Christmas up. Christmas movie. Yeah. I always get Game of Thrones and Lord of the Rings mixed up. And yeah, they're not I mean, even close, huh? I mean, they're both in the fantasy genre, so I oh, guess okay. a little bit. They're they're different, but like, I I would get why you get confused. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so I saw my Funko Pops. I mean, I bought that was my first Funko Pop I bought, and that smog. No, it's actually a, I saw the the elf, and then I saw they had a smog like the dragon, like a gold dragon on Amazon, and I bought it. And then that's it. Like that was the first one, and then I saw all that shit at Frankenson, and I started buying some. Like oh, this Batman Jeez. doing research, and people on YouTube yeah. would talk about like which ones, <laughs> the ones the collectibles dropping on like 
either a Target exclusive or like a GameStop exclusive or Hot Topic, oh, yeah. and like the the chases and all that shit. Like, fuck, I got you into just fell shit. down the I rabbit, down hole. rabbit hole. Started collecting, <laughs> collecting, collecting. That's where I'm at right now. I'm just falling down the rabbit hole. Like I got, I got homies that work at GameStop and shit. Like, I'm tapped in with the next drop, bro. I already know what's next. Like, it's it's pretty deep right now with Barnes and Nobles and shit. <laughs> yeah. For me, um, I kind of stopped. So the, the way I saw it, um, I was spending way too much money on it, and I still like it. Like, I want to collect more. But then I was like, you know what? I need to focus on less distractions, bro, because it's uh, I'm already doing too much. And, like, I know that if I do some cool work, whether there's videos or podcasting or YouTube, I could buy the collection later when I have money. Yeah, I get you. So that's where I started. I was like, fuck, I can't be spending money on this shit because I barely have money to fucking – by equipment and lighting and all this yeah. other shit we're doing. So that's the way I see it. But I, I do want to collect. Like, I want to have, like, the Lord of the Rings collection, Game of Thrones, um, the Avatar one that came out. Just, like, my favorite shit. my favorite fucking Just shit. Just like, the stuff you fuck with. Avatar The Last Airbender type shit. Hell yeah. The new show comes out next year. New Avatar? What is that, like, a... Uh, live action on, on Netflix. Like, Yang? Yeah. For real? Yeah, Damn, live I action. Know that. It's, it's what getting, the fuck? It's getting made right now. Dude, I feel like I live on a rock because people keep telling me about, like, what's coming up next. But, like, I don't really watch TV. I watch YouTube. And not even YouTube commercials are telling me about this stuff. Yeah. Um, I don't watch TV either, bro. Um, I just, because I still follow. So, I was really into, like, the Like, movies, the reactions and stuff. reactions. So, I, I still have some followers <clears throat> that post that kind of content. And I follow people, you know, that post that kind of content. Oh, so, okay. I see it sometimes. My algorithm shows it to me. So. Dude, that's sick. With the whole, but yeah, like live action, bro. Like, cause the M Night Shyamalan movie fucking suck, so they're doing a, an actual show. Hell yeah, that's gonna be sick. Ten episodes. I don't know how many episodes, but it's gonna be dope, bro. Well, you said next year. I think it's supposed to be twenty twenty three. Twenty twenty three. Probably by the end of the year, but maybe early twenty twenty four. I'm not sure to be honest. Damn. Well, I'm looking forward to that shit. I didn't even know that was gonna happen. Do you know who's gonna play Yang? Uh, to be honest, it's uh, a lot of Asian actors that I don't know their none of their names, but they act, they got you know like. Actors that fit the cultures, kind of. I get you, yeah. Yeah, so I don't know any of them, to oh, be honest. that's all good. I'm sure it's still going to be badass. Yeah, the, I'm pretty sure the choreography and the special oh, yeah. effects like are Like the fights sick. and shit, you know. Fuck like, yeah, bro. I can already see this coming. Like, you ever seen the new Predator? No, I've never seen it. It's, I think it's called The First Hunt or something, and it's like a, it's supposed to be a prequel. Yeah. And to be honest, like, Hulu, it, it was dropped on Hulu, and it's so good, bro. To In my opinion, it's so good that it was too short. Like, it was Too an hour short. and 30 minutes. And I feel like that's, like, the, the standard for, like, older movies. At least, like, these days, like, it's, like, two hours, two hours, something. Like, um, it, it was only an hour and 30, and I was like, bro, they could have did so much more. But it was still fire. It was probably, like, one of the best Predator movies that I've seen. No, like, for, I, like, I, haven't modern seen, I haven't seen it myself because, yeah, I haven't, I haven't kept up with, with any. The only things I've seen is, like, um, I saw a little bit of that Wednesday show with that Adam's Family. Oh, man. I'm slacking it on I that I haven't one. finished it, but I've seen... I gotta watch that one. I've seen some episodes. Um, and then what i seen. The Lord of the Rings show. The new one on Amazon Prime. That one sucked ass. Shit. Yeah, that shit was ass. I'm hearing good things about Wednesday, though. Apparently, when, yeah. like, she's from here, right? The Yeah, Chalala. the main actress. She's from La Quinta or Palm Desert. That's cool, man. Yeah, she, she's from the Valley. And um, she went on Jimmy Kimmel, and she said, oh, I'm from the Coachella Valley and shit. That's what's up. I, I actually saw that video. I was like... I, like, I actually downloaded it. Uh, I downloaded it, and I'm I, I'm gonna make an edit between an ep- a part of uh, the podcast that I had with Danny Hastings, and then I'm gonna combine it with her saying it like she's in the valley, and then like oh, I'm okay. gonna post it. I haven't posted it, but I'll, I'll post Hell it. Hell yeah! Too. I like that podcast by the way with uh, Danny. Yeah, I've, I've heard of him from uh, Nice Gang. Nice Gang, I guess used to like talk to him or hang out or something, and they were talking to me about him because he's the guy that did the photography for like. Uh, album covers huh? yeah so he did um album covers in the 90s he did 150 album covers uh like wu tang what a g that's Wu-Tang, badass bro. bro he did like three or four like whenever you stream any wu tang song that cover he took that picture bro. Damn. and then the slim like shady part LP, of the history slim shady lp god damn, so crazy, um bro. he said in the podcast that kmart won because Kmart didn't want to sell the original cover because they had a yeah. dead body in the in the yeah, trunk. In the trunk yeah. So he shot like an alternative version of that, and I was like, "What the fuck? That's crazy!" Damn. And then Eminem reshared them into um, Eminem like 
he posted a photo of Eminem, like a 20 year anniversary, t- like they had a couple years ago. And uh, Eminem shared it to his Instagram, bro. And then, like, a bunch of people started following him. Like, his Sheesh. followers went up because Eminem fucking <laughs> shared them to his platform, bro. Fucking Eminem's a legend, bro. But so is he for taking that shot. Yeah, this is badass, bro. You know this is a, an OG. And, that um, is an OG for sure. Because, like, the, the album covers everything, bro. Like, that's legendary shit right there. Like, if you look at that, it's like that album cover behind you. So you look at that shit, and you already know what it is. You know what I mean? Like, you know who it is. Yeah. So that's pretty sick. He was saying the album covers back then meant more than they do now because I can see that. Because when before you actually had to sell it in the store. Like you had to like someone had to walk into a store and they see that picture that you took and if it's yeah. a badass picture that stands out on the shelf, then someone might pick it up and buy it. And now today is like People you just, just skip the song. It, yeah. You just flip through it. So there's no appreciation of the actual artwork. Yeah. Or it's made like digitally or now you've seen all those artificial intelligence fucking so easy to like make. the badass ones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like you literally yeah. type in something and it'll make a and badass cover. Like, yeah. So it's like uh, that whole art is lost kind of like with technology. Yeah. So it's still cool though. Like I, I still appreciate it. Uh, like at least for these days, I don't know if uh, people actually listen to full length albums, but I still do. Like all my favorite artists when they drop the album, I listen from top to bottom. You know what I'm saying? Like at least these days, like people are real into just singles and like they don't care what the cover looks like as long as the song's fire or whatever. But I get it, cause like back then, people paid like people bought stuff with like a uh, kind of like how they buy food. They pay with their eyes, you know. They look at it, and if it looks good, or like you know, you want to buy an apple that has like a black spot on it, you know. Yeah. It's like stuff like that. Like you get the album cover, that shit looks fire. You already like them, or you heard of them, then you know you're willing to buy it. No, and, and back then sick. too, how you were saying, if you wanted to, if an artist dropped a badass song. You out, you had to buy the album to listen to that song. Yeah, and now I was you, say, and, then, yeah. and you spend that money and you're already there. Like you listen to yep. the whole 15 tracks, and then you're like, "Wow, that's cool!" And then Damn. it came with the pamphlet, and then the pamphlet <laughs> had pictures and sometimes Real. lyrics and shit. I, I forget sometimes that's that crazy. obviously you couldn't just share it. You know what I'm saying? It's like you could <laughs> send it through a text back then and shit. Nah. Like you had to like like if your homie had the album, you're like, "I'll be there." Or he'll 10 burn it for you. Shit. Or yeah, like burning. Burn remember burning CDs and lime and wire and shit. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Line wire and then it's all soldier boy songs for real or porno it was always some weird shit straight up bro like <laughs> it was, line wire you could literally get anything yeah i used to I use uh, i didn't use line wire i used aries it was the same shit it was just aries? a different website oh, okay people just share their like, like pirate bay like yeah people were using pirate bay a lot yeah that, that shit was some wild times <laughs> on the internet <laughs> i don't know if there's even like a torrent out there like that anymore is there i mean why I would no, you have to you i know? don't know bro everything's like so accessible now I think people. The only time I've heard it is when people are trying to like watch movies and shit that are not that are like in theaters and oh, type of shit you. like that. Yeah, that's the only time. But even streaming services are like, you know what? People are stealing our movie anyway. Might as well stream it, mm-hmm. and then now they could make money and people watch it. I get you. Yeah. But yeah, I, I hate the the streaming services anyway. <laughs> it's too many. Fuck. So from going from reaction videos, so like, when did you decide like? would you consider yourself a youtuber like do you like yeah yeah youtuber i, I i've always wanted to be a youtuber like that's oh, yeah. i mean I, I i don't know i guess since you upload your first video you're technically a youtuber i guess technically yeah you know? maybe you're consistently uploading you there's no like yeah. oh once you reach a certain metric you're a youtuber i think you just upload videos oh, okay. and you like making videos and consume you know that's that's a lifestyle so for me um i don't know but it's like I do other stuff that's, a, but I feel like everything's about YouTube though for everything I do. Like the podcast, I used to do an yeah. audio podcast, and it was just too much effort and not it's enough traction. Tough, bro. Yeah, the, the audio, audio's tough. It's bro. tough. Like people ask me, like, "Hey, put it on Spotify." I'm like, "Bro, you know how many episodes I gotta go through to just do that?" You know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's yeah. a lot. It, it's a lot. I I I definitely um, I have to keep. You just kind of have to do that extra effort. Yeah, because that's an extra five listeners over there. You know, there's some, true, pe- there's some people that's that true. that want to. If yeah. people are asking, you should do it, bro. Just yeah. because like that, that w- makes it easier for them. Maybe they don't have enough data to stream YouTube because it consumes too much. Yeah, when stream the little audio, so for that'd be real. that'd be cool. I don't know. So as far as a creator, I guess like YouTuber creator. I don't YouTuber know. YouTuber creator, shit. YouTuber for sure. I do remember watching a video of you uh, explaining how to make a thumbnail on YouTube. 
And that shit helped me out a lot too, cause like that's why I got some badass thumbnails now <laughs> from <laughs> the us? from the Pixar. Oh, Pixar! Yeah, yeah, the Pixar video. You did one where it was like how to make a thumbnail, and you explained how to do it. That shit was pretty helpful. Yeah, I I I never done a lot more tutorials. I should have done more tutorials. I mean, Damn. I could still do it cause I know a lot of like little things I've learned over the years about like podcasting yeah. or and even just YouTube. I've thought about doing some, um, but I just. It's one of those things where you have the idea written down. You just haven't, like, put it on the calendar. So that's that's another thing, like, how to get things done that I've learned is, like, you literally just put it on the calendar and do it and just that do day. It, yeah. Because we it's all have ideas. Have we all have ideas. And uh, you have the, the thing right there that says who's coming what day to the podcast. If you didn't have that, December 10, you might forget to hit up that fool or, like, you know. Yeah. Some, but because you see it every day and you know it's coming, you get it done and you fucking yep. book it. Um, if you don't put like this day, I'm going to make this video or I'm going to make this tutorial. Then that day comes, you make that tutorial. And if people invite you to do something, be like, Hey, I can't make it till like eight. Cause I got something going on. Like if you have yeah. it on the calendar, you could put work other things around it too. Yeah. It's for sure. Like priorities. And plus like I've known that, um, when I write it down to kind of keep myself accountable, and I don't do it, I feel like a piece of shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm like, bro, you were tell you're telling yourself you're gonna do that in a week from now. And you didn't do that shit, you know what I mean? It's kinda that's like kinda how I keep myself on check. I yeah, write that shit down. I I, I'm, I, I suck sometimes too, I keep, like following up and doing all these other things. Sometimes I'm like, fuck it, I, I I know they know, I just don't wanna be like bothering people. I don't know. I get you, yeah. That's what I was kind of hesitant to hit you up for the podcast because I know you're a busy guy, especially like with the Desert Underground and just like your filming company and dropping hella content on YouTube. Like, uh, you know, I don't want to pull you from your busy schedule. So I just kind of like just kind of waited and threw it out there. You know, I didn't nah, want to yeah. like bombard you. No, nah, it was cool. Um, I been wanting to do this for a while. I, I was seeing I've, I've been watching your last ones with freaking Nene. Hell yeah. The homie. The homie, <laughs> Nene. Yeah, so this is probably, like I said, the second time I've ever been a guest. Shit. The third time. Oh, because I've seen you on Valley Talk before, too. Fourth time, then. Fuck. <laughs> I forget. <laughs> no, that's all good. That's all good. I'm all stoned. That's it. So, yeah, yeah, Valley Talk. Uh, I've been, so, I've done Selected Series. Fuck, I've done Heaven's Demons, too. Goddamn. Okay, so this, uh, <laughs> this is the... Fourth or fifth or sixth episode ever. It's all good. But it's been years. It's been a long time though since the Valley Talk. I think that's the last one. Yeah, Um, I remember watching that one. You were on there with Brian. Yeah. Yeah, that shit was cool. Yeah, that shit. That's a cool podcast too. Yeah, those fools are bad. Josh and them. For real, like I've seen the, you know, like the consistency that they that they work with. And that fool's been working on a lot of shit behind the scenes. Like that fool's got a lot of like ideas. He's got like sick ideas and content coming. Like I know that fool's. I fuck with that, man. That I fuck with the hustle. You know what I'm saying? And, like, on top of that, like, I appreciate you from, you know, from, what was it, last year? Just the, when the time when you allowed me to jump in and do my podcast at your studio with Brian, too. And, like, I know he was doing his, you know, yeah. Valley Talk was doing his there, too. Like, dude, I appreciate that. Because, like, honestly, I was kind of falling off on the podcast scene. And then, like, when uh, we did the podcast for yours, it kind of, like, brought that extra push to bring me back. Yeah. So I was like, dude. I was like, man, this the shit's dope. I gotta keep doing this more consistently, you know. It's fun, bro. Yeah. And I wish more people, not even just podcasts. I wish more people created content. Like, yeah, here, I don't know why here in the valley no one creates content. It's For so real. rare, bro. I think consistent consistently is is pretty hard depending on like you know what you do and whatever. But like, um, yeah, I think like everyone has a story, you know, or even just like post your day to day. You know what I'm saying? Like, exact there's people document. blowing up on TikTok right now. I didn't even know TikTok was that big, but people are literally blowing up by just posting daily life. It's nothing special, bro. It's just like their daily life, and people are just – it's like a, a TV series to them. They're just following your life. It's yeah. It's crazy. It's, uh, it's documenting. Don't create. That's what Gary Vee always preaches. So right now, like, I, I can make a post right now on Instagram. I'll probably make it like, oh, I'm doing the Green School podcast. Or I'm going to be on a guest on a podcast today. Fucking wish me luck. And that's it. Like, yeah. that on – and then that video might get a thousand views or it could blow oh, yeah. up or it could get, you know, like I'm, I'm not forced. I'm not doing a trendy dance. I'm showing you what I'm doing. I'm here yeah. at the podcast studio. Um, I'm, oh, today I'm fucking editing a song that I made. 
and just it could be a time lapse of you editing a song you made and at the end you play us a sample you of what you worked it, yeah. on. Like you literally you're already doing it. Yeah. Just put the little camera <laughs> next to you while you're doing it. So that kind of shit. It takes effort. It's the same it thing. Does. Like you, you gotta sit down and like do a little mini storyline um of what you or what you want to do yeah. and then or like oh what camera angles am i gonna get am i gonna be talking face <laughs> to the camera like little decisions yeah you start thinking so it does, like, it does take like, like that it'll be like a 30 minute like planning it and then do the task that you were gonna do like edit you were gonna edit the song or edit the video anyway and then yeah. boom like just put it on video you know post it and then people were late to you and, and support your music or support your podcast when you show up other sides of you so don't just post your music or your podcast like posting what you're doing going to vegas and shit like that that's yeah. like that's relatable and then when you draw music then they'll check out your music so that's cool like Hell yeah. more of that i gotta do more of like the the social media stuff i was on tiktok for a minute i mean the latest one was the jabawakis one but like i I barely post on the tiktok now like it, it to stay consistent is kind of hard at least for me like with social media Cause I'm always working on like the background with like music or what I got going on. Like probably at the end of this one, I can show you my giant juice box that I've been working on. Oh for shit! A music video. That's I got insane. I got it in the garage. <laughs> <laughs> that shit's fucking huge. Yeah, so. I'm gonna check it out. Yeah, bro, it's um, it's it, it is hard to stay consistent, but to be honest, it's just fucking. She gotta do you just it. Just gotta bro. show up. She gotta do it. Show up. You gotta day. show up for you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's a it's a tough one. A lot of people can't you know can't yeah. show up for you. Like you can show up to the job. You're nine to five, but then when you clock out, it's like you just don't show up for you. You're tired or whatever. Like that's like the the constant battle with me. Like I come home and I'm like, fuck, I know I gotta do this, and I get it done. And then sometimes I let myself down, you know. But it's just yeah. Like well, a, one of the things that I, like one of my biggest advantages why I'm able to post so much is because I work primarily on the phone. <laughs> so I'm, I'm phone calls, texts, emails. I'm always on the phone. And then when I'm not, like, there's moments where, like, okay, I answer everyone's questions. I do this. Hell, yeah. Fuck it. Let me, and then I'm, like, posting. Just jump in real quick. And then quick. someone will call me, you know, okay, what do we need? Oh, we need this, 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 and this. Okay, cool. Let me call this person do this. Or uh, I do drive to different parts of the valley, too, so I'm always driving and shit. Um, but for the most part, it's, like, I have time to, to be on that shit. I get you. So at what point did uh, the Coachella videos come? Like, when did you start making the Coachella Fest videos? So, uh, going back to t 2011 was my first Coachella video. Okay. Was that your first time at Coachella? No, my first time was 2009. Oh, okay, okay. So, I, when I was 16 years old, I used to go to the teen center after school. It's a, it's like a local, like, old teen center right there, Indio Teen Center. Yeah. And I, I used to go there because my parents couldn't pick me up till like, 5 p.m. after, like, work and shit. So I had to wait, like, either football practice at the rec center or the Indio Teen Center. And then I was there at the Teen Center on a Friday randomly. And then this, the ladies, like, oh, they just gave us a bunch of free Coachella passes, like, daily passes. You guys can only take one, passing it out to the kids or shit. I was like, what the fuck? So back then, Coachella, you could go single-day pass. Oh, okay, Up until okay. Coachella 2011 was the first year they made it mandatory three days. Three days? Okay. So, yeah, before you just buy Friday. Yo, a day pass? That's hard. Yeah, that <laughs> That'll shit. That'll be hard as fuck. That shit was dope. But the problem was, like, Friday and Saturday sometimes wouldn't sell out, only Sunday. Oh, uh, okay. So, they were so people were favoring, like, one day. Like, one yeah, day one day exactly. type shit. So they're like, you know what? We need to make it a three-day and make it an experience where people come and, like, camp and all that shit. So people were still camping for single days because you could still buy the three-day pass but they okay. kind of forced you to go three days now Damn. so anyway 2009 i picked friday and then ended up going friday with my sister so the homie got got a pass and i told her like hey pick friday and so i got two tickets um me and my sister went to to coachella and then i didn't want to stay by myself she had to go to work like at 9 p.m because she worked at carl's jr and coachella season they're open 24 hours or whatever uh, yeah that makes all the sense. traffic that passes by so yeah. I ended up um, leaving with her because I didn't want to stay by myself when I was 16. I was like, oh, I don't know. It's kind of scary. And shit. I didn't even have a cell phone at the time and shit. Sheesh. 2009, yeah. It was during the recession, so we didn't have money like that. So I got oh, to go man. for free, you know, to Coachella. So. That's cool, bro. Boom, but ever since then, I was hooked, bro, because, boom, like vibe. you're exposed <laughs> to that fucking environment. It, it wasn't as crazy. It was way smaller than it is today, you know? Oh, okay. But, like, still, like, I was, like, 16, and I was like, dude, music festivals are fucking badass. Like, yeah, that, that's it, you know? And then in 2010, I only went on that Sunday. We snuck in. Um, 
we paid uh, but before you actually park right outside the gate and walk up to the entrance and there was like some Mexican fools um, picking up cans <laughs> and they the homie got us in for 50 bucks bro god damn 50 bucks each and then we got to see that's what's up we sat to got gorillas and phoenix yeah. and shit. people people used to tell me that like yeah bro I got in for free. I just snuck in. And I'm like, how do you do that? Like, how does that even work? <laughs> yeah, back then, you, there was also, like, you go through the bushes and shit because it was not as regulated as it is uh, now. I now you can't you. even drive up to it without, like, a bracelet on and shit. That makes sense. Because they probably, like, found, you know, people finding ways to get in somehow. Yeah, they kept making it harder and harder. Yeah. Now it's pretty hard. Like, you still do it, but it's very difficult now. <laughs> and then, um, so, yeah, so 2011 uh, was the first year I went the three days. Um, when I turned 18 for my birthday, they gave me um, the tickets had just dropped. And then in my birthday, like the week after. So I wanted a Coachella bracelet. So Sheesh. they bought me one for my 18th birthday. <laughs> Dude, that's cool, a, man. For oh, yeah. three days. And then the tickets were like two something back then. Less than like 300 bucks, maybe. Okay. So it wasn't too much. Like 100 bucks a bad. day. 100 yeah. bucks a day. And I don't have to pay for hotel or travel because it's local, yeah. you know. So that's right here, was, man. <laughs> <laughs> so that shit was bad, bro. And then... Um, I made a vlog that day, or like I recorded it. We had a camcorder that we used to use for um, this before cell phones had cameras and shit. Yeah. So we had a camcorder and recording birthdays or like special moments for the family. And I took it inside Coachella, you know, and I, I, I uploaded a, a, it called the Coachella Highlight 2011. And it's kind of like a vlog, but I, I never did any talking. Like it was oh, just, just kind of like just videos. POV shit. So, but yeah, bro, like Kanye and Wiz Khalifa but... and Arcade Fire and Kings of Leon, like. That's yeah, probably really? one of my favorite Coachella's of all time. Boom, I uploaded that video in 2011. And then then all those years happened where I didn't do shit till 2015. Remember I said 2015 when I started listening to podcasts and shit? Yeah. So for those four years, I, didn't know, I, was going, I went to Coachella 2012, 2013, 2014, but I didn't record. I don't know. I don't even remember why. I wasn't making YouTube videos. So I, uh, that's okay. I didn't take a camcorder or nothing. So, cool. so you were um, just enjoying it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, 2012, I have like pictures on Instagram from those years, but not, or maybe little videos with like whack phones from like fucking <laughs> 10 years ago. Mobile razor and shit. <laughs> yeah, that type of shit is all grainy. But yeah, I didn't make any videos, record anything. And then uh, 2017 or 2016, I did like a, a lineup reaction video or 2017. Fuck, I don't remember. 2016, I think. It was like me talking about the lineup. And then uh, 2017, um, I did a review of the whole thing. And then 2018, I did a first reaction to the lineup dropping. And then that 2018, it got like 10,000 views out of nowhere, bro. And all my videos that I used to do, the movie reviews, book reviews, they used to get 100 views, 50 views. So this one got 10,000, bro. I was Just like, what the nowhere. fuck? You're like Coachella like, oh, reaction, 2018. And then I was like, oh, shit, that's just crazy. And then I made a tip video. If you're going to Coachella, yeah. 10 tips. If you're going to Coachella 2018, and that one got like 20K. I'm like, oh, uh, shit. Like, the algorithm likes this shit. And I've been going to Coachella already at that point, like five, six years in a row. I'm like, I'm just going to talk to tell people what I do to like have a good time and shit. Yeah. And then and then uh, leading up to 2019, I dropped 50 Coachella videos for in the yeah, next yeah. year. Um, Coachella news, rumors, tips, how to save money, um, how to be there comfortably, well, how to buy tickets, um, shit like what to take inside the festival, items you can't take, what I recommend, shit like that, you know, like different places to stay, um, and update videos. Damn. It was all kinds of stuff. Shit, I didn't even know about that. I just remember, like, the Coachella tips for sure, and then, like, I've seen a few of, like, the POV ones. Yeah, I remember so, those. so those, um, leading up to 2019 was my theory, I'm like, if I got a lot of views 2018, I'm like, 2019 is going to be crazy. So Hell once yeah. it started trending, bro, boom, the numbers started coming, bro. The people <laughs> were just binging my videos like crazy. I was like, what the fuck? And then Coachella, during Coachella 2019, since I was making all these videos for the last five year, four years on YouTube and shit, the homie saw me uh, recording. I took pictures at the Desert Drip where they had like Chief Keef and then we were talking about earlier. Yeah. And my homie who does like uh, AR Studios Gato, he... He's like, bro, you got to come shoot with me. That shit's bad. It's cause I had just got my new camera, and, like, it was a badass camera. I went to do weddings and shit with him in 2019, like, learning how to edit yeah. and making some money on the side, you know, to buy more gear just to do that. And then um, the mayor – what happened with the mayor? Oh, yeah, so the I, I started my podcast in 2019. So everything happened in 2019, bro, like, everything oh, leading yeah. up to that year. 
started my podcast early 2019. That's the year. That's when I dropped the 50 Coachella videos before the Coachella. And then um, because I had the podcast, I had this one politician from the city of Indio. And then the city of Coachella had an event. And the mayor had seen that video, like, on Facebook or some shit. And I asked him, you want to be in the podcast? And the mayor is like, hell yeah. So I had the mayor of Coachella on my podcast within the 10 episodes, bro. I was like, Damn. what the fuck? She's getting <laughs> big, heavy hitters right here, bro. 10 The episodes? audio fucking sucked on that one, bro. The audio was trash. I didn't have Still mics. Fired. It was like that. Like, I would put my phone, and whatever the audio picked up from the phone was my audio, bro. Damn. Like, trash fucking. But that's cool, though, because like, you can you know? see from the beginning to the to where it is now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I was just like, you know what, fuck, I'm just going to keep doing it. And then um, because I had him on the podcast, he hit me up. The opportunity came when the Tucanes de Tijuana were... Um, oh, yeah, yeah. They were getting yeah. the keys to the city. The keys to the city thing. Because they were playing Coachella 2019. Um, and I did a video with them. He invited us. like, hey, you guys want to come take video? Just because I did a podcast with them. And then he got us in there. We were recording them like with the other media outlets from the Valley and shit. I asked him some questions and everything. And then... Um, Dude, that's some dope shit. I made a right vlog. There. I made a that's vlog. A oh, the, the uh, Los Tucanes de Tijuana received the keys to the city. And I posted a vlog on YouTube. And then I posted it on Facebook. And I tagged them. And they reshared it to their fucking, I don't know how many million of followers, bro. God damn. And so that video got like 50,000 views, bro, 2019. Fuck. Boom. So the algorithm just like, boom, exploded. And then at Coachella, I had a theory that... Um, Will, uh, so Jaden Smith was scheduled to be at, at the festival. Yeah. And Will Smith has never been to Coachella. Will Smith, I was like, this was going to be a guest performer. There's no way yeah. his son is playing Coachella and Will Smith doesn't show up. So um, I took my niece. To, it was Coachella weekend too. And um, Alex didn't go that week or that day. So Alex, because we ended up going both weekends since I was the Coachella fucking guy. <laughs> <laughs> and then... Uh, Alex texted me. Will Smith posted that yeah. he's in he's in in like Palm Springs, and then he deleted it off his story. I was like, Oh, oh shit. shit, he's, so he's here. He's so here. when <laughs> he was about to perform, I I was like, I got the phone ready, and then I recorded the performance. Boom! I tried uploading it to YouTube, but it was fucking Coachella. You don't get no signal. So I posted it like at twelve when I got home, like at one a.m. or something. When I woke up, that shit had like a hundred thousand views, bro. God, I was damn. like, What the fuck? And then uh, my my Coachella first rea- uh, their reaction to the 2019 lineup, it went to 70,000 views because there was an artist called Black Pink. They're like a K-pop artist. And they were on, on the Coachella lineup. And um, they have like super fans, I guess. Like K-pop fans are crazy on the internet. So <laughs> the Black Pink fans just ran up the numbers, bro. And they were just commenting Black Pink. Because I was like, what artists do you guys recommend? Boom, Black Pink, Black Pink, Black Pink, Black Pink. I was like, what Jeez. the fuck? Like, like, shout out know Black Pink. <laughs> <laughs> shout out Black Pink. Yeah, they're actually pretty badass, bro. You should watch the shit. Like, the production they do for oh, music shit. videos is crazy, bro. The choreography, crazy green skin effects. Like, yeah, yeah K-pop's man. another level. But, yeah, um, so I was doing, um, so all that happened, that same, so that one got 70,000. And then I did a video titled All the Stages Explained, All Coachella Stages Explained. And I said, oh, Black Pink is probably going to be on this stage. I don't know which one. That was before they dropped the set times. So they dropped the set times for Coachella, like, the Wednesday right before. And as soon as they, they announced, all my comments were like, oh, Blackpink is playing at the Sahara. Blackpink is at the Sahara. My comments went crazy. That video got, like, 50,000 views, uh, bro. I, from, like, 1,000 views to, or, like, maybe, like, 5,000 views to, like, 50,000 from damn. the pa- Blackpink fans. So I was like, what the fuck? So those all those videos were blowing up right around 2019. Then I dropped the Will Smith one, 100,000. And... The next morning, I hadn't uploaded a video, and I went to the Kanye Sunday service Sunday oh, morning. shit. I uploaded that vlog. I've seen the, like, videos of it on YouTube. That shit is pretty sick. So that one, bro, um, we didn't really, we saw Kanye and Kid Cudi the night before. It was Saturday, Saturday Kid Cudi played at the Sahara. He closed out the Sahara tent. He brought out Kanye for, like, Kids see goes. They did like I think I don't know if it was a whole album or like three or four songs. Okay, okay. I can still feel the love. Like oh, yeah. I still hear the Showing echoes. Him. The <laughs> echoes fucking were bad, bro. I was like, fuck. So they uh, Kid Cudi ended like at one thirty. We got home like at two. 
we woke up like at 6 a.m., like 6.30 a.m. to shower, to get ready, to like freshen up. Super tired, fucking, oh, yeah. like exhausted, because it started at 9 a.m., and of course, Kanye was late. So it didn't start till like 11, bro. So we had no sleep. We were standing in the sun at fucking 11, like 100 degrees outside. Yeah, damn. And then once he finally came on, it was pretty sick. Like Kid Cudi, they were all doing the fucking Sunday service. Yeah, it looked dope. Like the whole, like the little hill and shit. Yeah, that shit was crazy, bro. It was a, it was a pretty cool experience. But we hadn't slept and we were fucking tired. So like at 12, 1230, it ended right before the festival was going to open. So we went back home and took a nap. But um, Alex was super tired. She went to sleep. And I stayed up editing the vlog from that morning. I edited oh, the vlog weird. for like an hour. <laughs> boom. Uh, did Kanye West Sunday service. Boom. All the, made the thumbnail. Posted it and then took a nap. When I woke up, that shit had 100,000 views. God damn. On the same weekend, bro. Like, plus Tucanes, Kanye, so just dropping Will numbers, Smith. Like, bah, boom, boom, bah, boom. Bah, my, bah. my algorithm was fucking blowing up. I was like, damn, this shit's insane. God damn. And then, boom, like, um, so... I had like a thousand, around a thousand subscribers by the end of April. I went to four thousand subscribers just from like Coachella people watching videos, <laughs> and boom, like that shit was crazy, bro. I was like, damn, my plan worked. Drop fifty videos, drop the algorithm picks it up, boom, consistency, and then Staying once Coachella and trends, <laughs> boom, 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 everything just went crazy. So that was cool, um, and that's when like I realized like, fuck it. No one's making Coachella content on YouTube. I'm gonna be the fucking Coachella guy. Like tip videos. People make Coachella videos, but it's like one time vlogging. Like big influencers like uh fucking Emma Chamberlain or whatever will make a vlog. She's like a big influencer. Oh, this is how Coachella was, and she'll make her vlog and that's it. But no one and then that's it, she'll never talk about Coachella again. So I'm like, what about people who wanna learn about how to go to Coachella? I was like, yeah. fuck it, I'll I'll fill that void. It's super niche. Cause it's only that festival, but I feel like I mean I it's think needed. it works out. It's definitely needed. I mean I'm gonna jump on those videos once I go to Coachella next year. You know what I'm saying? Cause mm -hmm. I've never been to Coachella. Never been? Never been. I gotta experience it, bro. When I seen your your latest Coachella videos with uh, uh Carol G. Yeah. Like all those videos you guys you posted. Yeah, bro. It looked lit as fuck. You know bro, saying? it's it's life go. changing, bro. Mills said that, me that too. People tell me like people get sick and shit, so I think I gotta like just prepare with like that dust and shit. Yeah, just gotta wear like a bandana and like um. Now you have masks, you can wear masks, bandana, something just cover your face when you're walking, because a lot of people are just walking, picking up the fucking grass, bro. Allergies uh, are crazy there. Um, can't breathe and shit. Yeah, it's it's insane, but now it's it's super worth it, bro. It's twelve hours of music every day. 150 artists, bro. Shit. So you got to plan it out, basically. You got to be like, okay, from this time to this time, I'm going to listen to this person. And then from this time to this time, got to run all the way over there or however, who, I guess it's like who you want to see, right? Yeah, so they dropped the set times. There's seven stages, bro. God damn. And then you're like, okay. Oh, they're I not never all come big, huh? Huh? They're not all big? Like how many big stages are there? Like huge as fuck. Huge as fuck is the main stage, the Coachella stage, the outdoor theater, the Sahara. Those three are fucking big stages. And there's three big tents that are, they're they're big. Um, They still fill a lot of people. The Mojave and the Gobi. They're, um, the, the Gobi is kind of like a medium size. And the Sonora tent also like where the locals play. It's a medium size indoor one with air conditioning. That one's cool. Oh, that's cool. Um, But even though when I say small, it's you're talking about like, Big. I mean, it's big. Like yeah. thousands of people type shit, bro. Every stage is crazy, bro. I gotta experience it. You have I to, bro. It's worth it. it, bro. Like I feel like I missed out so much, like with the Dr. Dre and fucking Tupac hologram. Like, I gotta go. Yeah, that shit was haunting, bro. The Tupac hologram. Shit. Did you? Like, you actually saw it in person? Yeah, I was God there. Damn. We can watch. Dude, that's badass. Honestly, I'd pay to see Tupac as a hologram. Like, if there was a show in Vegas or some shit, I would dead ass pay to see that. Like, I'm. It's down. fucking bad. It was crazy because. We were, everyone was standing there and then like they ended once it was california love so dr drake did his verse he did his part and then after the chorus everything shut off and it just turned black and then i don't know it's like all these like lightning effects are on the stage <laughs> Dramatic. And, then, and then like just like some epic music and this was just rising from the ground and then he's like what's up Pac? what up snoop 
what the fuck is up coachella yeah. and everyone's like what the fuck that part so people weren't even turned up people were like what the fuck are we watching right now like what are we watching right now are we like high as fuck right now like what? it yeah. looks so real bro like uh, yeah. Dr. Dre spent ten million dollars to make that fucking performance happen. Fuck. Like he Coachella, like he invested money, like he lost money to do that, but he created such an iconic moment on Twitter. I remember that shit's trending worldwide. Every news outlet was talking about it the next day. Hell yeah, that shit put Coachella like on a whole new level, bro. Like the exposure that that shit got, and they were live streaming on YouTube too. Yeah, that's so how mil- I saw it. Millions of people saw that shit, like, bro. Random as fuck. We're just watching, you know, Dr. Dre. Tupac comes out and. I look around to all my cousins and I'm like, how come I'm not there? Like, <laughs> I got to be there, man. Yeah, that shit was insane, that bro. That fucking crazy. And then, like, the whole time, it was just like, fuck. And then what sucks is at, at the other big stage, Avicii was fucking closing out the, the EDM, like, stage called oh, the Sahara shit. Tent. And Avicii had, like, a crazy-ass mask. I didn't get to see it. I saw it on YouTube, but, like, I wish you could, like, walk. That's bef- um, actually, that was the first year that Coachella did back-to-back weekends, 2012. Oh, before okay. it was just one weekend. Um, but yeah, Vici, like that's what sucks is like sometimes you watch one artist and you have to sacrifice not watching yeah. the other artist because it's like fun. So when you said, uh, when you go to Coachella, like the plan, you have a plan at three, I'm gonna watch this artist at like 4 30, this yeah. artist at six, this artist, seven. But sometimes sh- shit changes, bro. Like you're in there and you're like, you know what? I I'm gonna go that watch happening. that one instead. I, you know, what? I feel like that one's gonna be better. Or you stay with the flow, or like you get yeah. early for another artist. You you catch an artist you've never heard of, and you become a fan. Like it's crazy, bro. Like the experiences there are sick. Or like you might be walking by a stage, and like the sound sounds fuck. Like whoever's playing just looks like it's a fun crowd in a fun environment. Yeah. You go in there, and then you might listen to a new artist that you've never. Like it's so cool, bro. Yeah, yeah. Like I've seen those too. Like silent discos. I see all this stuff on like uh, YouTube, and they. Like, people just wearing, like, headphones and dancing and shit. It's all yeah. quiet in there. Yeah, it's quiet. <laughs> it looks cool, man. Like, just... And everyone just has different frequencies. It. So someone's listening to different kinds of music than you in front of you. So you're both having a different experience oh, shit. at the same time. Okay. It's different, like, channels that you could change it to. So, yeah, like, it's... It's like a... Like, it's a crazy experience, bro. Like, all those moments... It's just an experience. That's... Music festivals... Not, Coachella's the best one, but there's other ones that are... It's just... You have to experience music festivals, bro. It's... Yeah, it's trippy, bro. I've only been to one. I went to uh, Once Upon a Time in LBC, and I only got to go because my friend, he, him and his girlfriend were not able to make it, so he gave me the tickets. And I was so grateful, bro, because I've never been to a festival, and like, that's where I was kind of seeing like shit. Like, we got there all last minute, looking at the lineup, and I'm like, fuck, I want to watch the game, but I really want to see I uh, YG. And I'm like, ah, oh, I. But I want to see Snoop Dogg, too. So it's like, <laughs> I don't know where to go. You know, it's like, fuck. But it ended up being we waited for the game for like three hours, bro. And homie never came out. Oh, what the fuck? Yeah, I was like, that's whack. And then they said, because he was late, I guess, they moved him to the other stage. And the other stage was like, it's yeah, by the same. Queen Mary. So you had to walk all the way back to the Queen Mary just to see the game. And yeah. I was already stuck in the middle of the crowd. So I was like, ah, oh, fuck that. <laughs> so, you know. Yeah, some shit, sh- some shit always happens. Yeah. And then you end up like changing your plan you know and yeah. that's that's what's cool you know it's a different experience bro it's cool shit. yeah man. so it's let me cool go back shit. to the content um so the problem with going super niche i got like 1.4 million views that month on on coachella 2019 or damn. april 2019 but what happens is because i went so niche as soon as may and shit started happening like my channel died because uh, all my energy was just on that the fucking month you know i get what you mean yeah so the, the months after that, um, I was just doing vlogs, like random vlogs. I did I did a 30-day 30, 30 vlog challenge on IGTV on Instagram. Oh, shit. Because I, I, I didn't want to post them on YouTube, so I just did it on, on Instagram. And I was posting every day a little vlog, like a one-minute vlog and shit. And some people liked that shit. Some people followed me from that, and they were, like, messaging me, like, that's crazy. You did a 30-day fucking vlog <laughs> challenge because it's hard, you know? Yeah, that the was consistency. Back then. I might fucking do that again on TikTok. I didn't know that people were doing that on TikTok. Yeah. Like, I, one of my coworkers, she just, she's a normal, you know, she's just a mom. She just posts her normal day life. Bro, she's got, like, 50,000 followers. That's just crazy. Just posting her life. Like, every day. Like, what she's eating for lunch. Stuff like that. Simple things. I'm yeah. like, yo, I didn't know TikTok was like that. I didn't know it was like... Just document your life, bro. Yeah, I had no and idea. And you're doing like cool that. shit because you're producing podcasts. You make videos about your Funko Pop collection. Um, be like Funko Pop co- collection part one. And then 
part fucking 20. I don't know. <laughs> or all yeah. my exclusives. These are all my exclusive pops. Shit. You make one day you're doing that, one day you're talking about just making your music or you're all to, today. I'm, uh, I'm performing a fucking 24 bank or whatever. Yeah. And then, I've been I've been trying to do consistent uh vlogs with those. Like I just dropped the 420 bank vlog. I seen that, yeah. I dropped um the one where I went to go see the homies, the Bermuda. They did a show at the Novo in downtown LA. Oh I yeah. Dropped that vlog. I even added a little bit of your uh your show with uh DJ Desco. Yeah, yeah. I added a little bit of your show too. And actually I added the Funko Pop story in Los Angeles cuz we ended up going over there. So I <laughs> I put that into the vlog too. So you could every one of those could be an individual TikTok. Those every little that's part. True, that's five yeah. TikToks right there, bro. That Fine. you have that like ready. That's true. Well, one thing I noticed to make my editing easier, if you make a vlog, airdrop the vlog into your phone. Or uh, how do you edit videos? I do um Filmora. Oh, Filmora. That's what I have, yeah. I, I don't think I've ever used that one. But the way yeah, well the I edit the videos and then I send them, I airdrop them to my phone. And then, um, oh, cause you I'll got just, a MacBook, huh? Yeah. Oh, okay. And then, like, a little bit, um, then I extend it and whatever and edit it. I edit it on the TikTok app. So, a three minute video, I can make like f- four or five clips of it, different oh, yeah. versions or parts of the clip and shit. Fuck, it's a yeah. little, little hack right there. And then the subtitles, add subtitles to every video you post, bro. Captions, Lyrics, huh? captions. Yeah. That's key right there, the engagement. Yeah, that helps, helps a lot, out bro. a lot, too. Yeah. I remember you mentioned that on, uh, actually on TikTok. I think. I think you told me that on TikTok comments. You're like, oh, yo, okay. put captions. Yeah, no, that shit, that helps a little bit. Like, Hell your yeah. video might have gotten 200 views. Now I got 600 views or 1,000, you know? So it's a bit, I don't know how the algorithm works still, but I'm just posting different stuff. I get you. Yeah, like, I'm starting to really learn the importance of TikTok. Like, I was on a little TikTok wave for a second. But then again, I've noticed my style, bro. Like, just get stuck on that shit. Like, just stuck watching it to where, like, TikTok has to remind me, hey, bro, You've been watching been TikTok watching too for much, too dog. fucking long, you know? Like, I didn't even know they had that. I didn't <laughs> even know they had a TikTok to tell you to stop watching TikTok. <laughs> like, what the fuck? That's crazy, fool. Like, that's how long I was watching that shit. I was like, that, what that's why you can't consume, bro. You go in. I consume a lot, but, like, so I go, this is my strategy. Like, I open the app, and I go straight to my, like, main story. So I'm not calling the fucking algorithm. And then I'm checking comments, and I reply to every comment. Um, sometimes I text, sometimes I miss comments or whatever, but I try to reply to every comment. Yeah. That's the first thing I do is just reply to comments and then see if I could post uh, something. So if whatever I'm doing, I'll try to post something. Instead of starting to fucking just scroll, I'm, I'm trying to create something. I get you. And then um, one of the hacks that I got to get a lot of engagement on a new video is 30 minutes before you post, Whatever is on the For You page, like and comment, bro. Like and comment or reply to someone's comment. Scroll, reply, comment, boom. Reply, comment, boom. 30 minutes before, do like 15, 20 of those comments. Then you post and then do it again for another like 5, 10 minutes. Now all these people you're commenting on, especially videos that have no comments, those are the best ones because yeah. someone comments, the first thing you do is like, who the fuck commented on my thing? <laughs> then they go to your page and they watch your new video because yeah. they're curious of who That's commented. That's a good idea. That shit has helped me like get like, the shit going now. yeah I've, I've never done that on tiktok i did it on instagram one time but bro i did it on instagram one time so much where instagram told me I, i'm not allowed to comment no more oh yeah it's because bots bots fucking ruin everything yeah that shit told me like oh like i was restricted from commenting for the next hour so i couldn't comment anything i was like what the fuck even with like fall fo- or unfollowing people like i just started like unfollowing a bunch like i think i unfollowed like 400 people and um they how told do you me de- that I couldn't unfollow? How do you decide who to unfollow? Honestly, it's just like a bunch of like those like fail video like you know world star type of Instagrams that I follow, and I'm just like, dude, it's just too much. Like I see a lot of the same shit because they're posting all the like meme pages and shit. Yeah. yeah, I try to unfollow a lot of celebrities, athletes. I used to follow like NFL, but I'm like, I I don't want to see this. Like I need, yeah. uh, you know, like I'd rather see the shit that you guys are doing. Like I sometimes I don't see yeah. shit that locals are doing because. I just see fucking celebrity content or like all this shit. It's just flooded with like all. Yeah, like I rather I rather fucking see what you guys are up to, you know. Yeah. Um, I I follow like the main Chargers page, but I don't follow any Chargers players. Uh, if I do, maybe I don't see their content, but. Hell yeah. Yeah, and then um, I try to follow up. I don't follow maybe like, 
like four or five hundred people recently too. Yeah. I, I usually, anybody that's not following me, but it's hard. I, I was like checking. I'm like, who the fuck are these people? It's bro? a lot, you know. To dive and, in. I can't even keep. And then I got fucking annoyed. I'm like, I'm not even gonna do it. <laughs> yeah. But I unfollowed like a bunch of celebrities and yeah. just shit that takes your mind off things. You know, I, I don't want that shit. Yeah, that's that's mainly the reason why I was doing it because I was like, you know what? Like, I'm just watching a bunch of bullshit. Like, I I want to see like. You know, like how you said, like, locals, what is everybody doing? Like, I couldn't see shit. I would only see it when, like, I'm going through stories. You know, like, I'm on stories, so then people post it on their story. Like, that's how I seen um, your TikTok for your event for Desert Underground. Mm. And so I was like, oh, okay, because you had Amadeus on it, you know, Mills and stuff. So I was like, okay. And then that's pretty much how I see everything on Instagram anyways. Like, Instagram is so flooded. Yeah, because, like, if you don't post it on your story... I dead ass can't see it because everything's just I follow because that big celebrities pages. <laughs> pages will be first, huh? Yeah, like all those like I guess the algorithm puts who they think is important, you know? Yeah, because you're following them, so that's why I'm just like, dude, I gotta just keep. Damn, that's crazy shit. you say that because sometimes I feel like, damn, I'm post. I, I don't want to post too much because I'm annoying people, and then you, you now you're like, I don't even see people's shit. I'm like, that's true. I don't even <laughs> see a lot of people's shit. Like, what was the last time you actually just? Opened your app and that's like the, the homie or something, like it never happened. It don't you know it only happened to it's like someone's birthday, someone passed away, like a uh, big moment. Yeah, like, like something like like people Personal. where they repost crazy. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty sad. How, like when people pass away or like like stuff like that, it spreads quick, bro. But then you post content, you know, no one really shares it <laughs> sometimes. <so. laughs> nah, uh, I think a lot of times too is you just don't see it, bro. I think that too. I, I've seen some shit like sure. some homies would post and then like, oh, cool. Like the homie posted. Then I go to their page and they posted like fucking six other <laughs> stuff that I've never seen. I'm like, wait, what? Like, like what? he has the a algorithm kid? doesn't <laughs> show me that, you know, like, I don't know. That's yeah. why I tell people, like, if you want me to see your shit, just send me a DM when you post. Like, I'd rather you fucking send me a DM every day of a new post than not see it. Like, I also I'll fucking like it and comment. That makes sense, yeah. And I try to comment on everyone's shit. Like, if I see it on my timeline... And no one's commented. I feel like, why aren't people commenting? Like, even if you leave one emoji, so I'm just like fire emoji. And then yeah. sometimes I share shit to my story, um, because if I'm already seeing it. Might as well just help the <laughs> algorithm. Like, like yeah. people. I don't know. I, I just like to. I like I like to throw out those comments too. Like, uh, well, sometimes like if it's just like, I have if to do so, you might quick, be, you know? yeah, you might be doing something. Yeah, like, but I'll, if I'll I'm if fire, I'm there, you know? I'll, it takes you two seconds to leave an emoji and yeah. help out somebody, and then like sometimes. All it takes one comment, other people comment, because sometimes no one wants to be the first comment. Like, no, that's kind of weird, huh? Like, I've noticed that, man. Like, I I'll be post the first something. I, I even tried this. I was like, watch, I'm gonna post something, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say nothing. Just let's see who comments. I think I had like six comments, random. And then I was like, all right, I'm gonna post again. But I told all my family, like all of y'all, leave a comment right now. So they all left. There was like 12 comments. After that, it turned into 35 comments. To 60 comments like just out of nowhere because like more people are commenting so i guess they say like oh okay mine will get lost in the shuffle if i comment something you know because they don't yeah. be the first comment or whatever yeah you so get I, i've tried that and i was like what the fuck like this is crazy like the little games you know i like, know the mind games <laughs> it is my <mind laughs> social games. media it's uh it's like little tricks another way to get a lot of engagement um i share on the story and then i tag as many accounts as i can oh okay, okay. so like and then I and you go hide it behind the post. Too. I was gonna say, yeah, you, you <laughs> I hide, hide it. it all the time, bro. And I'll tag yeah. fucking Mills and like, like all my watch pages this. and boom, <laughs> and then boom, like then you'll get like six, seven, eight people posted on the story, and now your views go up. Yeah. Um. Oh yeah. Yeah, shit like that. What, what else? The fuck with that. <laughs> yeah, just little hacks, bro. For real. But yeah, just send me whenever you post. Send it to me on my DMs, or even you could even tag me too. So just that way I could see it. Like just boom. Yeah. Another way to get engagement. Um, sh just share people's shit. Oh yeah, of course. Like show love, you know. Yeah, show love. Like yeah. show love. It's kind of like how people want to get in shows. Is like just go to shows, support, and then talk to people there, and then they get you in your show. You know, like yeah, that's the way. And then now you're helping the movement get a little bigger. You know, like yeah. no one wants to perform to an empty crowd. You know, for real. Like that's that's like a fear, honestly. Like pulling up and like just nobody there. Like that sucks, bro. Like how how has that been? You know, with your Desert Underground, all the shows you've been throwing, you ever had like a, I don't know, not not like an anxiety, but like a, like fear of not much of a crowd. 
Because, like, it's kind of like throwing a party. Like, you invite people and shit. Like, or they're yeah, really going to so come, I, you know? I've thrown five shows, and then one of them was a flop out of the five. One out of the five? Yeah, I mean, we had a, a decent turnout. That was maybe, like, 30 people, 40 Which people. One? The one we did, um... Wait, wait, did you go to the... Yeah, you... No, the one at the CV, um... In Palm Desert. Oh, Desert okay, races. yeah, yeah, yeah. The one where I said that I wasn't going to rap because, like, it was a bunch of kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that <laughs> yeah, one. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that one. That one's kind of a flop. Not a lot of people turned <laughs> out. I didn't really promote it right because I kind of just posted it, like, the flyer. I didn't make videos. I get you. I didn't... I still pulled up, though. I mean, it was, it was cool. No, it was cool. Yeah. Like, so I do have fear no, that I'll, people are not going to show up, but I have, a, I have an out. Oh, okay, okay. If you're making... If you have content, you can make some whack shit look good, bro. So, you Show, can make tell a, me, tell me how you do that. So <laughs> you just gotta do edits, bro. So, if you have a little bit of a crowd, I like to take shots behind the shoulder of people where it shows. Oh like yeah, yeah, yeah. Behind the shoulder of people and like the the performer, different angles. So when you edit it, you just do fast editing with their song and like you're still gonna get good shots and it's good content. Yeah. So even though it might be tw- twenty people there or five people there, but if you get a good shot of the performance. You at least have a content piece or a few yeah. content pieces. Or you could even interview people if you needed to. Oh, yeah. Um, like vlog style or one of those TikTok styles. So as long as you could create content, I don't look at it as a failure. Um, it is a failure when it comes to marketing because I don't even consider myself a promoter. Like people are like, oh, you're a promoter now. But I don't even – I'm not a promoter. Like I just like I music, you. bro. Like I want to have fun and do badass shows. Yeah. I even though that, I guess that's a promoter. But, you know, um, yeah, I just don't like that term. I get you. Yeah. I get yeah, you. so I just want to do some dope shit. So anyway, your job as a promoter, I guess, or someone that's throwing shows, you got to get as many people as possible there. There's many so heads. I, so I didn't <laughs> do fucking good job. So I didn't do it. And I know why. Because I didn't post any videos. All I did was post a flyer. Post the flyer. Um, I didn't really DM it or personally invite people. Some people didn't even know I threw a show because uh-huh. I didn't do a good job because they got lost in the algorithm. When you just post a flyer, sometimes you scroll past it, you don't even know whose event that was. Like, yeah. I didn't put my face to it. I didn't fucking consistently tell people, hey, I should show this weekend, show this weekend, whatever. Like a constant reminder, yeah. like on the story. And then number yeah. two, it was at 4 p.m. during NFL Sunday. It's hard to compete against the NFL. A lot of the people I fucking, you, were, yeah. you know. So there's a couple of variables, but um, overall, we still got content. I haven't even dropped that content. I Is have, that why? Um, no, no. I, I just haven't even got to it, bro. Because right after that one, like a week later, we did the the big event with the grupos. I haven't dropped that content either. I missed that one. Well, I ha- I've dropped like highlights of that night. But we recorded the performances from all artists, and my guy's been working on the audio. We're gonna have to drop twenty four videos from that from that night God with high damn. quality audio, though, like Clean mixed shit. and max, mixed, mixed and mastered, and two two three angles, bro. It's gonna be badass videos. But um, I see you, man. I see you working. I it's just you. hard. Um, I need more editors. Like that's like my number one thing is like I have shows, I have podcasts, I have fucking vlogs, and then I'm gonna be making the Coachella videos, and it's like fucking. Today, I'm going to be editing the one podcast, like the Grupo one in Spanish. Boom, I'm editing. I post it. I'll make a thumbnail, upload it to YouTube, fucking all the fucking bullshit. So I couldn't even touch one of my vlogs that's sitting in the computer until I finish this one. So tomorrow, I'm editing this vlog, and I have another podcast sitting there that I can't even work on until I finish this vlog. The next sense, day, yeah. I do this fucking podcast. Then the next day, this yeah. podcast. So it's like... It sounds overwhelming. Yeah. <laughs> It's over. I like it though. I love oh, yeah, editing. Yeah, it's cool. Bro. It's good to stay busy. Bro. And it's different. So it's good. I'm doing one podcast in Spanish, one podcast in English, and then like Damn. the podcast in Spanish is doing. It's it combines music videos. So I'm also working on music videos, and Ooh, like I forgot all about that. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the that's the biggest potential is on that podcast, bro. So we're doing an interview with like. Fucking high quality music videos and mix Sheesh. into one. Like it's a show, bro. That one's fucking sick. So that one is sick. I'm, I'm. Uh, that sounds sick as fuck. That shit. I think that's like a, a big potential on that one. Yeah. Long term. I've been thinking good. about that too. Like kind of, in the future or the near future, I want to get this podcast to look like more of a like how you said a show, not just like we sit down and talk. Like, I'm talking like if I get an artist or like some whatever you do, I can like incorporate that with videos or have you perform live stuff like that like yeah uh, bro i used to do that on instagram but 
you know, kind of stopped it for a minute. It, it takes – it's all effort, you know? Yeah. And building a team right now, um, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to build, like, a, a badass team to just keep going because – Right now, the next six months, we're about to go into that period that we're talking about the Coachella season, bro. Yes, sir. So, 20, um, circling back to my, my Coachella journey, 2021. Um, oh, okay, 2019, boom, one point something million views. Then, in a few months, I was doing some podcasts and some vlogs. But then, summer came, and I, every summer, for some reason, I kind of stopped making videos because it's so hot. I kind of like, except this year, this year I fucking went, I was like, this year was my goal to not stop because that's always like a, it's too hot. I don't want to fucking do all this. I'm like, this year I have to fucking do it. So this year was good. So um, 2019, the rest of the year was cool. And then boom, 2020, I'm like, okay, here we go. This Coachella 2020 video, this Coachella 2020 video, this Coachella 2020 video, dropping, 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 dropping. And then Coachella 2020 didn't happen because of COVID. Yeah. So all that effort, all the whole year, building, 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 fuck, no payoff. And I was like, fuck. Then I was trying, I actually was trying to do, I was like, what kind of content should I do? And I was like, fuck it, I'm stuck at home. I can't go out. It was, you couldn't, it was the first two, three weeks, the first month that you were just stuck at home. So yeah. I was like, fuck it, I'm going to make videos on like just what whatever's happening around the world. So I would just go on Twitter, find like trending news and talk about them. But that shit was kind of depressing. Not just what I was searching, but just that time. Yeah. I did I not mean, feel like fucking it. making content or even like who the fuck cares what I'm making right now when fucking the world's ending. Like, yeah, I every, you. you know, like no one cares about my opinion on this shit, which I, looking back, I should have just kept going because even if pe- people don't care, I think those um, those reps of making that content makes you yeah. better. Speaking to the camera, you know, like shit All like that. that. But also because, like, people don't really have stuff to watch. I yeah. Mean, it was pretty fucking depressing, bro. It like, was fucking... I, it hit know? me hard, bro. That Honestly, shit was Honestly, I took it... I took a... I took advantage of that. Like, I finished my, my whole second album during 2020. Just because, like, I, I lost my job. And then, you know, you're just at home all day. And to keep me sane was just, like, making music and working out, really. Because, like, God forbid you go on, on fucking the internet... All you see is bad shit. Like, bad shit, 24-7. Bad seven. news, bro. <laughs> like, 24-7, oh, negative, 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 yeah, negative. somebody negative, got negative. sick in my family. Fuck. Or yeah. somebody somebody famous died from that same thing. And, you know, it was just crazy. Like, 2020 was so pretty that rough. Was, that shit was rough. Um, yeah, I didn't do shit. No, and then I, I didn't really make content at all for, like, months. And then 2020... Yeah, at the end of 2020, like November, December's when um, Eric from the food park was like, oh, I'm about to get this place. If you, Because I had told him I needed a studio. That's around that time, like oh, on yeah. September or whatever. And then I was like f- fixing up that studio until February 2019. 2021, I'm sorry. Fuck, I'm fucking. So 20, February 2021, that's when they opened the food park and that's when we had our studio. Um so like six, seven, eight months, I didn't do shit, and then boom, in that studio, you know that was an experience. That too. studio was hard. The studio was <laughs> dope for those fucking that year, bro. Like that's gonna oh, be yeah. cool because looking back, like you had a like that was that moment, you know. Like oh, we had yeah, a couch bro. in there, the fucking mural with the green, and it was cool, bro. I was hella nervous to do your podcast. Yeah, just cause like I didn't want to sound stupid, and especially like when I walked in, I was like, yo, this shit all high tech in here, bro. <laughs> like you got cameras on the walls and shit. <laughs> it was cool shit, man. Yeah, that was cool. Uh, we didn't have great lighting. Um, but we, it's, it's all learning, bro. It's all learning, uh, learn just getting better, being in front of the camera, just keep going, keep going. And then my goal was like to run it as a, as a business, like renting it out to people at like a high quality studio yeah. because I saw, um, when I was trying to do my podcast, it's cause I ended up moving. So I used to live in the trailer park over there on, um, it's called Arabian Gardens. So me and Alex moved in there. Okay. And it was just us two. And I had like a whole room in there where I just created content kind of like this. And um, that's when I was making my videos and Funko Pop collections and all that. Oh, yeah. So I was like, I had a lot of like, just I was doing whatever. And then we ended up like, we had to move out and we didn't know where to go. I had an option to go to my mom's, my brother's house where I'm currently living with a desert underground because my brother was living there. That's his house. And then... um when they were going to her, her parents' house because they had two extra bedrooms because um, her she moved out and her other sister moved out. So when we moved there, we were like, oh, we'll be here for like six months until we find a house. And then COVID hit. 
Uh, so we ended up staying <laughs> for like almost two years because COVID. We're like, let's just save money and fucking see what's up. So I couldn't really create a lot of content. Um, I that's why I stopped the podcast too. And then um, yeah, that's when that that oh, that space was offered to me. So I was like, fuck it, I, I want to be creative. So I started. I set up. I invested into the room um, to set it up for a studio. You know. God damn. And I was watching videos on YouTube of like running it as a business that you in LA a lot of people were renting podcast rooms yeah like to get like 50 bucks an hour you go in there um they have it they provide everything all you have to do is talk and if and you could edit it yourself or they charge a fee for them to edit it for you or some shit like that and I was like oh that was, if so I was like if that shit was here in the valley I would probably pay for it because I don't have a place to do it and then yeah, boom yeah. like out of nowhere um, I got the idea to do it myself but I didn't want I never opened it because um it was the pandemic still, and we couldn't really like it. It's literally sitting in a room, fucking one on one with like yeah. people, like, like talking to a microphone, do, like, six feet away from each other and shit. <laughs> <laughs> so I opened it for you and for Valley Talk. You guys were the yeah, only two I that was that, that was so producing. Much, bro, for real. Like, so that was the vision. But then um, the food pack and they were closing down yeah. within less than a year. So the money I invested into that fucking room and everything and ended up like being wasted. I put fucking. Spanish fucking expensive ass tile in that bitch. Bro. I thought I was gonna be there for a few years, you know. Damn. Um, was it was that, leftover was that the tile. Plan for that place was um, that was that the plan? Like for them to like. Yeah, they were supposed to be, be there for a years. sustainable business. Yeah, oh, but I, I mean, it was shit just kind of like a real quick and we're out type of thing. Shit happens. I don't know all the details, but yeah, we uh, we ended you. up moving out. Um, and then that was twenty end of twenty twenty one, and then at that time. My brother moved to Mexico in the beginning of 2021, and we were renting out his house. We had, like, people renting there for, like, a year. So I ended up, um, I was like, you know what, fuck, I'm going to move in there. Like, it's time, you know. So I ended up moving in there. One of the renters was moving out. He was going. He was moving to Mexico or whatever. So the house was pretty much empty. It was just one, one uh, my brother's uncle or whatever, or, or my uncle. So me, me and Alex moved in there in last December, about a year ago. Damn, it took us like seven months to get it ready for shows, though. It was a mess. Shit. I mean, it's dope shit, bro. Like, when the whole, your first show, Desert Underground, that shit was crazy, bro. When I saw it on, um, on Instagram, people posting it and all that shit, I was like, damn, I missed out, bro. Like, <laughs> I was so sad. That was a crazy show, bro. Hell yeah. I wish I was there to experience it. To sure. be honest, that one was like, it was like catching lightning in a bottle. Like, yeah, it was way better than I anticipated. But it's what inspired me was the Prechella show. Well, Coachella and Prechella together, because yeah. when you guys performed, I made those videos. We were there to just shoot Amadeus that day for a music video. Oh yeah, to, yeah, I remember. But me and Brian were there with the cameras, and I'm like, bro, all these fools are getting badass performances with the crowd, and no one's documenting this shit. I was like, bro, like let's just record. And then Brian's like, I'm down, let's record. Fuck it. So me and Brian started recording you guys. Cause I'm like, we they need the content because like it's a win win, you know? We need the content. You need the content. Yeah. It's a win win right there. It's um you have to have content in order to get booked for more shows. You have to have content for social media to see yourself perform and you're like, oh fuck, I kinda fucked up there. Maybe I should do this better or, like, maybe that song wasn't fitting. You know, like, That's how will you know if you don't even see yourself? Like, you know what I mean? So yeah. so that was one of the inspirations, and that was pre the week before Coachella, and then, boom, Coachella 2022. Um, I had, like, a crazy badass experience and epiphany. I was on shrooms and shit at Coachella. Oh, shit. <laughs> weekend two, bro. I fasted the whole day and then just ate shrooms. Boom, oh, like, my mind went fucking amazing, bro. Like, I was fucking thinking of, like, that's when I got the idea for doing badass shows because I was thinking of Preachella when I was watching Brockhampton. I'm like, this shit was, it's just a group of fucking rappers, but the production is fucking sick. Fire. All these fucking rappers are hyping each other up. I'm like, we could do this shit in the Valley, bro. Like, I literally thought that when I was watching Brockhampton. Oh, yeah. So I was like, if I invest in good-ass production and then get the local rappers, we'll make a badass show. Like, I know for sure people will fucking turn up. Because I saw it at Prechella, bro. People were turned up, and it was like a uh, whatever backyard <laughs> stage, you know? Like, it was a, oh, yeah. you know, like... It, I that's so, that show, too. No, that, that show was and fun. Shit. And I oh, saw yeah. the video. I'm like, wait, if people would come to this, like, if you actually make it worth it, if you invest your time and effort oh, yeah. into it. So, um, 
Yeah, like I, I had the vision. I knew where I was gonna get a stage, but this fool fucking went above and beyond. And he got fucking <laughs> crazy pyramid and like sparklers. DJs de la raza, bro. That yeah, fool. Yeah. So that fool's not even a DJ anymore. He 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 provides all those platforms for DJs. Like he does setups. So he'll go to um, a DJ will get hired and he'll just do the setup for them. Oh okay. And he That's doesn't cool. even DJ anymore. He just does setups. Like this was bad. That's dope. So shit. I was like, fuck it. Like let me get this fool to do a setup for a show and. Yeah. He was down, and then, uh, boom, Stella Creates fucking donated her, her like, backdrops and shit. So we, I helped her do a video for, like, a promo for uh, some bridal shower stuff she was doing. And she helped us with decorations and shit. That's hard shit. <laughs> yeah. And then the yeah. 360 photo booth for content. That shit's hard. Lighting, too. content, photography. Yeah, man, watching videos. it all on, on social media, I was like, fuck, bro. Like, it was just bad timing. Like, I was sick. I was talking to Amadeus like a week before the show, even Mills, and I was like, dude, I can barely talk. And they're like, dude, just just try your best, get better. And I'm like, bro, it's a wrap. I didn't even know what to tell you. Like, I, I didn't want to make it seem like I was just flaking, you know? Yeah. Because I hate, I don't, I don't want to be that guy, you know? So it was just bad timing. But I'm glad to see that, bro, that shit was a success, bro. 100%. Like, when, when like, just the community, like, the, the hip-hop community... We never had a, a spot, bro. And, like, because that shit was such a success, it's like, god damn, like, Angel's putting on. And that shit looks wild. Like, all the videos that were promoted, just wild shit. So, it was, it was, I was happy to see, like, those are actually my homies on stage killing that yeah. shit. And then, on top of it, all the shit that you were doing is, like, pro shit, you know? Like, what was that? Fucking pyros? Yeah, pyrotechnics, bro. bro, bro like, we have pyrotechnics in that come bitch, on, bro. Son, you have pyro in your backyard, dog. <laughs> that's some hard shit right there. Like, yeah, what? Shit, yeah, I was bro. Like, I, sheesh. I'm, that's DJs that are that's production, It was cool, bro. bro. That's, that's what it is. You know, yeah. That dude killed it. So I have the, experience. The like I said, I've been going to Coachella for 13 years, bro. Like, I've been to fucking the best shows in the world. Like, that's Coachella's the best shows in the world. That Carol Fuck G yeah. fucking set. It's fucking Fire. crazy, bro. Tribute. It's, um... Hologram Tupac. I've seen all this shit, and I I fucking I just love music, bro. Like I've been going to, I'm not just Coachella. I've been to like Hard Summer. I've been to Made in Made in America. I'm going to EDC for the first time next year. I just went to a festival last weekend. Best time mucho. Like, okay. my favorite shit is music. Like, I don't make music, but like, I love everything about music. You uh, know? Yeah. That's like my passion. So that's cool, bro. I would say for sure, like. Um, everything you're doing, man, it's inspiring for sure. Like everyone's talking about it, fucking. Everyone's excited for what's next for the next coming year, you know? Cause like, 2022, it's a wrap. This is the last month, and then 2023, like we're excited for the next one, bro. Like, like I told you, like a couple of my background plans, like I'm going under Green Skull for a little bit, um, and like the whole new style that I'm gonna bring, and just everyone's excited and. I'm excited to see what you what you're gonna put together next with like shows and like you're talking about like productions with all your stuff like I'm ready to see it man. 2023 yeah, is gonna I be fucking I don't know, hard. I don't know. I already it's, know. I want to do shows, so I want to do a combination of different things next year. Um, I really like the just. Were you there for the Giselle show? I wasn't. I was at work. I was trying to go there, but I just so that make one it. that was um such a cool vibe, and I want to recreate it, that vibe. So. It was just them doing one hour set, like it was just their show. Fuck. So they had a show at Ruben's Ranch, and it was like one of the days that was super stormy and rainy. Uh, um, so they couldn't even, they good. couldn't perform. They were headliners, and they couldn't perform. Uh, so uh, I had sent Brian. To, we were shooting a music video for them. I sent Brian to get me B roll. Fucking, they didn't perform, and I felt super bad. And and it was like literally two weeks after Desert Underground, and I was like, fuck. I hit up Giselle Wu, and I was like, hey, you want to come do a show, like, on Sunday at my house? I'll bring the stage. I'll set up a stage, then the sunset. We'll get the scenes for the show. And then, like, since you didn't get to perform, invite your friends and family. Like, it's not a public show. It's more like a private show, but, like, yeah, a little more intimate. you get sure. to play the week that you were supposed to play, and I'll make you the video. So they fucking, they were down, and then um, it was cool, bro. Like, uh, then one of the band members had their dad sell tacos. Um Everyone's like it was like a BYOB type shit. That's cool. Shit we right there. recorded during sunset, and it was so cool because it was just them for an hour, and then Justino like playing music in the background while everyone was talking to each other afterwards. And one thing about my shows, sometimes there's too much going on. I don't even get to talk to people. Like, 
Yeah, I get you. It's so crazy. It's just like, oh, this artist is up, and then this artist is up. Oh, who's next? Okay, this artist is up, and this. And it's like too many artists, like seven, eight, eight performance, nine performance, and keeping track. Do they have their USB? Little things, you know? So yeah. what I like, I was like, I'm going to do shows next year where it's like three artists. One main headliner that I'm going to give them like 30 minutes, someone that's like badass, and then like two openers, three artists max. And just the vibe. Like, then afterwards, like, yeah. the artists could hang out. Fucking, it's a little party. But, like, it's more of a networking. So. I get you, yeah. Photographer. Anybody that shows a good, up. It's a good de- idea. So, yeah. Those, and those are easier rappers. to pull off. Big shows are hard to pull off. There's a lot of planning. So, if it's, like, more intimate shows, kind of like that, like, you had to be there for the one headlining spot, you know? Yeah. We could do those more regular. And then um, my goal is I want to do a show with, like, 10,000 people in it, bro. Fuck. I forgot how much was Desert Underground. Like how much was there? If you had it, like the first one, like three fifty. Damn, that's still good. That's private invite only. We did not promote it. Private invite only. So all my shows have been private invite, um, except Friday night. Friday night was the only one we promoted, but we were competing against everyone that night, and we had fucking what like a hundred fifty. It was a good amount. It was on. It was still a good amount. Yeah, that one was cool. Um, which we we didn't have a food vendor and um. I dropped the ball on that one too. I I was um, yeah. I remember we talked about that yeah. a little bit. Like I think I, it could have been a lot better. I, I didn't have yeah. seating. I didn't have this other stuff. But we still had people. We got videos out. You know. Like I said, it was still for sure a the Lambo success. flow. Like were still there, did you, did yeah. I drop that video? Lambo flow. Uh, I'm not sure. Lambo. But flow. the the no handouts, like like how you're explaining, like the to make the production and shit. That shit's hard, bro. And I appreciate that too, because you know, like you're. You're making videos for everybody, like, just cuz. And I appreciate that, man. Yeah. I, well, it's like, I'm also making it's them cool. for myself. Like, I want to get better. Yeah. And every video is like, uh, okay, how can I make this better? How can, I, okay, let me see. Let me do this angle. Let me do that angle. Yeah. And I know, um, video I'm, put, I'm on point. It takes, <laughs> it takes a lot of time and resources. I'm investing into this with my time. Yeah. Like, you know, um, and it's not about the money, cause like if everything was about the money, I, j- I would just be doing fucking construction. I would not fucking do one video. Like, I'll focus on doing construction, and I'll make more money, like short, like I guess like. But I feel like money, you can make more money long term creating content, and I like being around the music, fucking shooting music videos. So oh, yeah. what I want to do is like a version of like lyrical lemonade type shit. So like Cole Bennett, fucking all he that's how he started. He was doing music videos for like all his local artists. Yep. Then he did a show with 100 people. Then he did a show with 200 people. Then he got a show for 1,000 people. I think he booked Playboy Cardi before Playboy Cardi was famous. And then it blew up. And then he blew up like a week or two before he was going to perform. And then that shit blew everything up. So yeah, I'm like, that. fuck it. Like, I don't know where this is going to take us. But I'm like, if I could do high quality recordings for you guys and shit. The future is bright, bro. 100%. Um, yeah. And better. I don't know. I don't know. Like. I know I'm excited for next year too. Um, nothing's planned out. Like I don't know how I'm, what approach I'm gonna take everything because it's been we just kind of been doing it by the yeah. fucking week and month and shit, bro. Like nothing's That's dope, been, man. That's dope. We're just making shit happen. So my goal is a ten thousand people show. I don't know how I'm gonna do it. It's not gonna be at my place. There's no way. I want to do. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm, I need like investors. Some, yeah, you need to. Yeah, I yeah. I need saying, investors. Yeah. I need to. Get with some planners, so I'm gonna work with others. Like I don't, I don't even care about being like fucking doing it all by myself. Like I, I want to work with a couple of people that I know that've thrown big shows and have a meeting with them. Like, okay, if we need ten thousand people, what do we need? How much is that gonna cost? Like, how much is the venue and the permits for the city is gonna cost for ten thousand people? Police, bathroom situation. How much are bathrooms gonna cost? Yeah. How much is the stage production gonna cost? How much is marketing? How much is security? How much is food yeah. vendors? I'm assuming like there's there's probably like what like insurance and shit. How much is the insurance for like, like a certain amount of people? Yeah, like people get hurt. You gotta have like fire department do inspections. How much is that? How much is um? Yeah. So for ten thousand, and how do you get ten thousand people to show up to a place? You gotta have fucking some A list or some really well known upcoming artists. You gotta use influencers to show up. You gotta pay influencers to come to the festival and promote it. Like fucking L.A. people, San Diego people, Riverside people, like. There's got there's a lot of fucking shit too. Yeah. That's hard, bro. It's a it, that's a hard test. Plan, you know? But that's my goal. Like I want to just keep going crazy. Um, and I don't know how I'm gonna do it, but I'm a, that's my goal for next year. Hell yeah, 
I think my my goal for next year is for sure just to get one show, but like a private event, kind of like how your your first show went, but maybe a little smaller, because I don't really have a I don't have a space, you know. I I will figure that out somehow, but I have an idea to like maximize what I got going on, but also like put other people on too. I don't know exactly how yet, but I I have it all in in writing and planning. But um, that's one of my goals for sure. I want to throw at least one show with like a like a top artist that I've been listening to. So we'll see how it goes. But yeah, that's one of my goals for sure. I want to do one show and then just push my music way harder, like 10 times more. Like I'm probably going to go. I'm probably going to go a little crazy. To be honest. <laughs> like my plans for sure. Like I, I'm going to for sure go a little crazy. What do you mean? Like dropping a lot of consistent content? Yeah, music? Like, con- like consistent and just different because like the the idea for green skull i don't want that name and that image to look the same so i'm gonna like build the the artist if that makes sense oh uh, you know what I'm so saying? you're gonna have two personas type shit yeah like kind of like that's a, badass bro you know what i'm saying it's kind of like with mac miller with like uh, larry fisherman or delusional thomas those are all mac miller it's just different names so like stuff like that and I, i'm inspired by a couple things that i saw in uh vegas and i'm like you know what like this is showbiz you know like i see i see what's yeah going on, you, you're you know? a business you're a entertainer yeah i think you're a musician a rapper an artist but you're still an entertainer you need yeah. to entertain people i want to maximize like Boom. the image fuck that's, yeah bro that's what i'm gonna so go i always thought that like green school sounds badass bro yeah. that name is hard as fuck like i feel like you should be like a how are you gonna do that? Are you gonna are you gonna wear like a Ooh. mask and shit? Well, I mean, I don't want to like talk about it on the podcast, but I can tell you after. Oh, fuck. I'll tell you what I'm gonna hey, do. Cut, cut, nice. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what I'm gonna do because it's it's gonna be like I don't know. I I just I've always wanted to do something like along that lines of building the artist. It's just I don't know if I'll get lost in between like who I really am and who I'm trying to portray. And then I got into the podcast, and then from jumping from the podcast on Zoom, it started getting me more interest interested into like meeting more because i already have friends like that yeah and then like i guess it just like brought it all back but because of the podcast that's why i'm gonna try out green skull because everyone kind of knows me as green skull you know but it's kind of funny like when you go to the shows they'll be like who's this guy with the four letters but it's me but they call me green skull you know what i'm saying yeah that was always confusing to me to be honest coming from i was always like Okay, it's MTKG when it comes to the music, music. but a green school. But and I always thought like this should have the same name. Yeah. That's just no, marketing, yeah, marketing everyone, bro. You gotta remember people are dumb. That, yeah. People are dumb. Yeah. We're just fucking apes, bro. <laughs> They're fucking scrolling. Like we were saying, it like sense, people yeah. just scroll. <laughs> it's too hard to, for them to connect the two. To like remember. you could do that. I mean, I guess you could do it, but it's better you have the podcast and then you have your performances i think that's gonna go hand in hand bro that's yeah. gonna be badass bro it, it's gonna get better i'm excited to see what you're gonna do. Is definitely like you guys gonna some get cool better. shit plan yeah because i had to do that bro because like people were questioning me too like why are you gonna do green skull i'm like bro what do you mean my look at my instagram gabriel green skull my podcast green skull podcast everyone calls me green skull anyways and like the the four letters it was kind of hard for people to remember too so and it green skull in the long run is a and more attractive name, you know what I mean? So I think that... Uh, it flows green school. Yeah. Green school. It's easier to chant, you know, at shows and stuff. So, like, it, it just made sense, you know? Yeah. But I'm not going to say... And it's, it, it, it could be, end. like, for example, um, the homies from... Uh, you know the Heavens and Demons podcast? I don't. So these fools, Adam, I like what they did. So they did, like, a 100-something episodes on their podcast. It was a hundred, I don't know, a hundred like ten or I don't know how many. But he they did like a hundred episodes. It was they they called it um, fuck I forgot the name, but they, I forgot they called the podcast. And then after a hundred episodes, they kind of stopped, and then they rebranded on the same channel. They rebranded oh, to Heavens and Demons, and they started with episode one. But there was already people that were listening to them from like a hundred episodes, and then now uh, they started with episode one. They had all that experience behind them, how to make videos, editing, boom, boom. So it's the same shit for you. You have all this badass MCKG, like, work that you've done. And then it's like a fresh start, bro. Now it's like you have all that experience <laughs> behind you. That quality's a little better than, Way than better, you know, yeah. quality's better. Maybe the sounds are different. Maybe more more of a personality because people could attach 
you two is green school now that's like one brand yeah. i think that's gonna be super cool for you successful for you yeah it's gonna work out and the way i'm gonna play off of it with mckg and green school you'll see it's gonna be it's gonna be cool like the way i'm gonna play it off it's gonna be pretty nice fuck i'm so excited it's bro. gonna be like a storyline you're gonna you're gonna jump on like the story and you're gonna see it's gonna be cool <laughs> that's the transition <laughs> the transition now nah, fuck yeah bro green school 2023 that's what it's i'm like. ready for that fucking calavera verde you already oh, know man. Shit. you're gonna rap in spanish too you know i've been practicing that oh I've been yeah practicing that. i've been practicing my spanish i love when sammy does that you when know? he does the switch yeah the quick switch yeah switch that's just hard bro and it always hits hard because you're like oh shit props for that hey, you know bilingual shit yeah, you can okay. maximize everything, like the music, content, you know, Spanish, English yeah. content. That, that's what I noticed this stuff, year man. big time. Since I started doing the Spanish content, I'm like, bro, it's way easier to blow up in, <laughs> when you're making Spanish content. Like, anytime I post anything in Spanish, it does better numbers than in English. Like, fucking, I don't know what it is, bro. Spanish content just fucking hits, bro. It does. It really does. Even, like, the all the, the videos that you've been posting with, like, uh, what, what would you call those, like, bands? How do you, what do you say? So they're groups. Grupos? Grupos. Okay. Yeah, I guess. They're more bands the band is when it's like like a, those like 16, 17, 18 members with the trumpets and oh, that's a band. Okay, okay. So okay. if it's when it's like a shadow guys, that's a band. A grupo it's only three or four members. So some yeah. of them they're different styles. Like some will just have guitars, three guitars, uh two guitars and a bass. Some of them is like a guitar, a fucking accordion, and a drummer. Some of them are like a tuba and like an accordion and a guitar. So it's kind of like um, yeah. mixed real match. But, uh, so it's group, <laughs> yeah. So it's groups because they're like three, four people. Yeah. A band is like fucking 15, 18 fucking guys uh, and shit. Oh, okay. So the groups, yeah. So those guys, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm getting into that culture. You know, like I've listened to the music for a long time. My brother, um, he's like nine years older than me, so whatever music he was listening to he'll like show it to me and like we'll play it he took he used to take me to concerts too like mexican yeah, yeah. concerts like uh bailes they call them they call them bailes uh we, we've seen all kinds Hard. of shit so <laughs> I, I was always like around that music um and then for every like big birthday or event we always hire a grupo to come play at the parties you know shit like that that's so cool man and i, I never <laughs> knew that there was so many grupos in the valley bro i thought it was like i knew two of them i knew two of them and that was it and ever since I started doing the podcast with them, I know so that there's like everybody. twenty something now. It's like, what the fuck? Like, how's yeah. there? There's so many talented and badass fools there, and bro. they're they're fucking good too. And they're that's g- that's the crazy part too. Is like, um, like before joining the CV rap scene, uh, group chat, I had no idea there was like that much artists. There were some dudes that I never even heard of. You know what I'm saying, even at some of the shows too. Sometimes there's new guys. But yeah, like with with your content, it's it's exposing that too because I had no idea there was that many grupos. Like and I thought it was just Fernie. <laughs> like I didn't <laughs> know, man. I was like, who else is out here? You know, <laughs> I had no idea. Yeah, and uh, I I've gotten a few grupos that people have told me that from watching podcast episodes, they hire them for their parties. Hard. And I'm getting them saying. gigs and shit. That's so that's shit. that's kind of like on the side, you know. And that's that's where it is. Like I want exposure for them too because. I just want to help people that are, if if I could help people locally, you know, and it's fun. Like, and I'm like, I'm around music so much, yeah. like with hip hop, you guys. I've seen it. You crossing over too with the Spanish. With Blue Sun. Then I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm starting to get into rock scene. So I've only done Giselle Wu and I've done the Blue Sun. Uh, I don't know. No, Razor J's a rapper. I don't know. So, so far, two of them. Um, there's a lot of bands I want to start interviewing oh, yeah. and do shows. That I want to do a rock show. That would be hard. A few rock shows, because there's too many bands to do one rock show. So this year, yeah. expect a few rock shows, bro. Rock. I want to do some, like, mosh pit shit, some yeah, more damn. cool, like, chill shit. Um, yeah, there's. I want to do more, and especially more Mexican shows, more hip-hop shows. Because yeah. I, 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 feel, I feel like most people are like that. Like, I know you have your. everyone has their preferred genre, but yeah. I feel like everyone also listens to different genres. And it's a different 100%. experience, like... If you go to a hip hop show this week and then next week another hip hop show and then next week another hip hop show, it's it's the same fucking homies, yeah. And then it's the same vibe, the same. But then it's like if one week you go to a hip hop show, then the next week's a rock show, mm-hmm. and then it's a fucking an EDM show, and then it's a Mexican show, and then it's another hip hop show. Now it's like a variety. It's a variety, yeah. Um, and then we're trying to bring um, it's, oh, man, we just had a podcast, but we fucked up on um on the recording and it, we our computer died mid podcast oh shit and fucking the file got corrupted we had it done like an hour 
So I was talking about, um, it was with this dude named Alex. He's a comedian for, here from the desert. So I'm going to do a comedy show at Desert Oh, Underground. shit. Okay. And the first, uh, the that's first cool comedy shit. show in Coachella, bro. No no one's ever done a comedy show in Coachella. And Dude, that's the, dope shit, man. Jumping all over the place. Yeah, give me a platform. Met a few, I've met a few comedians, but I, I didn't even think about that shit, to be honest. Just, just pro- and now I want to combine it with, like, have some music, too. So, boom, we enjoy an idol comedy, and then at the end, uh, maybe some music. I don't know how I'm going to do it yet. But that way it's like a cool vibe, you know, like, yeah. fuck it. I think it's going to be cool. That, Just, that's, that already sounds cool as fuck. Yeah. And even it, like the rock shows, too. I was, I don't know, maybe uh, I, I want to do a Spanish comedy one, too. I don't even know how many comedians are out here, but that's why I'm going to work with the comedians. And that's why I want to work with people, because I don't want to just do it by myself. Like, I want to work with other promoters that are legit, you know, yeah. um, good people, um, comedians that know the scene. I know a couple comedians that are actually throwing comedy shows at these, like, bars and clubs and shit. So work with them to make it the best experience possible, you know? Like, yeah. I know even if we make mistakes, that there's some mistakes I've made at these shows that I wish I would have done different, you know? Um, but again, like, whatever happened, happened. You just got to move on to the next thing, and yeah. at least we got content. You learn <laughs> so as you go, you know? You yeah. always got to figure it out when you fuck up a little bit. <laughs> yeah, the um, yeah, there's been a few fuck-ups for sure. Even the first Desert Underground, we were Honestly, late. it can't even be that bad, bro. Like, I've... I've done so many shows out here, and I'm pretty sure that your fuck ups are not even close to like actual fuck ups. It's <laughs> like, like I'm talking like some shows, bro. Like they didn't even have the stage there, mm-hmm. and it started already. No speakers. It already started. Oh shit. Or like uh, nobody's there because they didn't promote it or you know stuff like that. Like I remember I went to a show. There was a there was like five vendors and they were all pissed because the only ones that showed up. Were the artists? Oh, no people showed. No up. people showed up. Damn. And there was no, there was no stage. Yeah, it was all bad. So yeah, honestly, I don't think any of your fuck ups were probably like that crazy, you know? Yeah. I mean, if it ran a little late, that shit happens like that too. But that, like, your idea to do three artists for like the shows coming up, like two openers and like the main, that's honestly a better blueprint because, like, it just it. It creates more of a show vibe because when there's so many rappers, bro, it's like you, it's just you get lost in the back. mix. You get lost in the mix. Yeah. Unless like you're dope as fuck, then you kind of stick out no matter yeah. what. But you know what I mean? Like there, it's back to back and like we all get like maybe what, like 25 or 10, 20 minutes each. And then if you run over, then the next person's late because you went over, you know, stuff like that. It's, yeah, it's a it's lot of it. It's so much, so much moving parts, bro. Yeah. And to be honest, I mean, it can be done more efficiently and smooth if... um. If we had more staff, I think that's one of the things we haven't had is a staff, bro. Like, I, I feel like, yeah, like more, more people, more people helping out. Helping. Yeah. Like, Hey, you're in charge of fucking making sure the artists are doing this. Make sure that the security is it's official shit right here. This. You know what I mean? Like shit like that, bro. Yeah. Like you need that, man. It's me, that, Alex, that Gato, uh, Brian. And then like my homie Ricardo that's been helping out. Um, and then a couple other people, but it's like, it's hard to like, if we had more, like break it down into tasks. Like you're in charge of making yeah. sure that the there's the bathrooms are always clean. Make sure there's not clogged. Make sure that when people are parking, isn't have a parking person. Have a someone making sure the artists are here. Or they have the USB ready. Like I don't know, like little little things thing, that yeah. you don't even think about. Yeah, but, but when it, you're at the it's show, helpful. Like for sure. like the first Desert Underground, bro. I was running crazy. Everyone's like that. I look stressed. Is because. I was in charge of filming the whole fucking set, making sure the artists were fucking on time um, with their USBs ready, yeah. um, making sure that the DJ was ready to start the show with the lighting, making sure, you know, everything fucking. Yeah. It, and, it and then see, like... and seeing a lot of homies. There were so many people I wanted to, I, oh, what's up? Like, you just say what's up to them. You don't see them the rest of the night. And that's why I don't like because I, I want to talk to people. Yeah. You, you, um, and I don't have money to be paying like someone to record like full time. I don't have money to pay for all this shit because I'm not making money yet. So, um, you know, like I'm in, I'm sacrificing that, but like I know it's I know it's gonna will be worth it like for long sure. term for sure. You I know? mean that first show just banger, and then the rest to follow. And I have, fuck, if I had a fucking team, bro. You would have seen a lot more videos. Like I have so much foot. I have hours and hours of badass behind the scenes footage, just sitting in my in my hard drives, bro. Like, I, how, do you, I'm, I'm, how do you do that? You just have like all kinds of like, like SD cards. No, I have a, a big hard drive. So oh, I have a hard okay. drive, 
it's an eight terabyte hard drive. Oh, okay. So I have shit from my whole 2019, 2020, 2021 raw footage from music videos. Like when I did Mills's um, Seven Soak, I have all the raw footage, but I have behind the scenes of all that shit. shit. Us talking, talking to like the low riders and shit. I have uh, Anna V's music video. Um, these some of the practice sessions Tuesday night in Coachella. The practice sessions I have oh, yeah. videos of like behind the scenes of you guys just talking. Just like that's just gonna be cool in a few years. Like it's all sitting on my hard drive. And that's just a shit I could be posting daily, like three videos, three new videos that people have never seen before every day, like little fucking 20 second clips. Yeah. I just don't have the time because I'm working on creating the next episode of this and the next video of this. So I, I know I'm, I'm, I just I just um, had a meeting with somebody. So I added one person to the team that's going to help with the posting. So we're going to start seeing more posts. And um, I was thinking of starting a Patreon. A Patreon <laughs> with all the behind the scenes raw footage. And then whatever money we're making from there to pay for editors to post more content. Because it's to be honest, it's just that that's all I need is um need more help with need posting, help. help with editing, help with little things because it's a lot. And then you you say it sounds exhausting and it and it is sometimes, but it's fun. And I saying people are like, Oh, that's just dope, like you're gonna do cool shit, or like people tell me like, Oh yeah, yeah, whatever you're doing, that's badass. And that's just motivation. Like, some people send me DMs like, oh, thank you so much for the show. Thank you for this. And, like, that shit feels cool. Like, yeah. I'm helping people. Or, like, when people tell me that they hired a grupo because they saw him on the podcast and they got fucking an extra job. Like, yeah, it's, like, rewarding. Yeah, like, it's, you're doing something right. That's that, that's cool to me. There, I have this. It's hard because I never really said it publicly. I, I've been telling people that I want to start making music. That's, that's my thing. For real? Yeah. Oh, shit. Like, what kind okay. Like corridos and stuff. Oh shit! So you're gonna have like a grupo and everything? I don't. So I don't have a grupo. I don't want to perform parties. I want to oh, be an artist. Okay, like, okay. so that's um, I have like I just want to try it. You know, I was like, try okay. it, man. Shit, that'd be sick. So I want to try it. Um, I'm thinking, I want to like definitely work on the singing and learning and everything. So I I plan on making songs till the end of next year. So like oh. a year from now. But I'm gonna start in January, like singing lessons and everything, just to fucking oh, practice. Shit. I don't know where I'll take it, but I wanna, I wanna do some shit. That's gonna be sick. That's cool. Yeah, man. I just wanna give it a shot. And then, um, and then Sammy's like, "Oh, you should do raps too and shit." Like Ram, uh, Sammy. Yeah. Cause I'll help you write and I'll help you practice and shit. So I don't know. I, I'm, I'm never tried really, out. Have never, you actually like? Have you ever freestyle before? I freestyle a couple times um, with Angel Tiz and with Mills and. Um, but a few times and like sometimes in the car but like not really oh okay yeah cause I like the I, I, I like the Spanish shit more oh okay what about rapping in Spanish I never thought about that one that sounds hard rapping in Spanish that actually sounds hard yeah oh that should be dope cause like how does like I mean I don't know like I but the style know. that I wanna do is like a, <laughs> almost like rap so some of these fools that do corridos now like they have It'll be like a corrido, and then they'll have like a verse that's like super fast, like a rap, like not even singing, just like da da da, like and just going in. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So I feel like oh, that's just dope. Like it's a new style, you know. And you could, you could do some shit like that. So I was thinking of doing some stuff like that. Um, I don't know. I just like that kind of music. So. Probably should. Man, if you ever need beats, I got you. <laughs> send them. I'll yeah, make for sure. Coachella Angel beats. <laughs> for sure. Just fucking become an artist and shit. Yeah, like I, I was just like. How can I do it? Just because I'm around music so much. Yeah, just try it out, shit. Why yeah, not? and I never, not until this year's when I was like, fuck. Like, at Coachella, I was thinking that too. When when I was on Shrooms, I was like, I want to make music too. Like, this is so fucking cool. Like, Hell yeah. just create art, you know? Just survive. So I'm going to go hard on that. So the same strategy I have for YouTube with Coachella content, I'm going to do that for TikTok. I'm going to fucking just try to in. fucking blow that shit up, bro. I'm going to fucking draw daily Coachella content. Um, tips, history, facts, fucking advice, sh videos from my old culture experiences, from all the footage I have, shit like that. I'm just gonna fucking go hard with the content. Damn. Hashtag Coachella 2023, and I'm gonna fucking ride the fucking algorithm. Bro. <laughs> I'm fucking this year. I'm gonna go fucking hard, bro. Like this, you thought 2022 I went hard? Oh, but 2023 I'm gonna go hard, bro. Go hard, but yeah, like now that I I know my so at the beginning of last year or this year before Coachella, like. I didn't, I wasn't even doing shows. I was doing a few music videos here and there for yeah. a couple of artists, but I wasn't really like doing much. I was doing that podcast, but 
I had just moved into the new house in December, so I think my first episode was until like March. Okay. Since I left the studio from November to March, I didn't drop one on podcast. I might have dropped one, I don't remember, but like for the most part, I didn't do anything for those like three, four, five months while I built the new, the new room. Um, all right, all right. And then Coachella happened, boom, I got the motivation, I got the idea for the show, boom. Then the show started happening. Then the shows just kept happening because like people fucking loved it and I loved it. I didn't know how that was, I wanted to throw shows. Yeah. Know? And then boom, like the podcast just, because of the shows, it kept getting better. Like for some, because I've, I've done a lot of podcasts where I'm not even confident to share it. Not uh, like, confident to share, but I feel like this is, ah, this, this, this is kind of whack. Like I feel like, you know, I don't know, even though like there's moments that are cool and, and it's cool for the person that was yeah. on it. But I don't know if ever you ever felt like certain guests without naming any names or yeah. you're like, oh, yeah, well, I don't know, sure. like even when you share, you feel bad. Like I don't want to waste people's time. I always felt like that. Like yeah. some episodes, I feel like that, bro. And then now I feel like, oh, fuck yeah. Like I share the fuck it on my podcast because I feel like, okay, these episodes are badass. Like I want people to watch this shit. Yeah. And even if they don't, like I'm proud of the fucking work that I'm doing. Oh, yeah. And now uh, there's moments where I, and I wasn't. Because I've done a hundred something episodes and there's a lot, there's probably like 40, 50 episodes. I don't, not that many, but <laughs> there's at least like 20 episodes where I'm like, why did I even fucking do this, you know? Yeah. It's I, part I of growing, you know? It's part of the growth, part of the process. But shit, before we wrap up, um, did you ever like see this coming? Did you ever like think to manifest it or was it just kind of go, go, go? Manifest what? Like everything you're doing now. No, that's what I'm saying, bro. I just never kinda just came together. So I was talking about I ne- I've never had a vision. I never knew what I wanted to do. I just start. I was just doing like I said. Oh, fuck it. If I'm already re- listening and reading books and watching YouTubers review books, and these are probably getting paid for it too, and like to do shit you're already doing, I'm gonna start doing it myself. And then I was like, I want to be a YouTuber. That's my thing. Going back to, are you a YouTuber? Yeah. I'm like, I want to be a YouTuber. <laughs> like, fuck, I've been studying that shit. And different shit, fuck it, reaction videos are doing good. Oh, let me do a couple of this. And then Coachella popped off. And then I, I, I just never know, like, I always knew there was, I, there's high potential because I've done some cool shit where like, the Coachella shit got millions of views. I'm like, if I, I know how to get millions of views with the Coachella stuff, I'm gonna try to use the same format for other stuff or like, what else do I do? like. I just don't want to be a Coachella influencer for the festival. Like, it's cool. Like, I love it. Yeah. But that's only, like I said, it's only, like, those few months of the year. Like, what about the rest of the year? What about, what uh, What else should I be doing? And I never knew what it was. I just kept doing stuff. Vlogs, podcasts, this. I don't know. I'm, I, I don't know. I don't, have, I don't have it figured out. I just kept doing it, kept doing it, kept doing it, kept doing it. And then, and then everything came full circle after the Coachella show, then Coachella. Because also, we didn't have Coachella for two years, so I felt discouraged where... where I was taking my channel too, yeah, like, like what would you for two years, my channel's dead, I, what do I even do, like, I wasted all this time, but then I'm like, nah, it's, Coachella has to come back eventually, like, I was like, fuck it, just keep going at it, keep going at it, and then boom, this year, bro, like, I, I, I met so many people that recognized me at the festival too, and that was validation, bro, That's like, bullshit. I, be, I was vlogging, like, oh my god, hey, I love your blog, hey, I see, thank you for the tips, bro, oh my god, like, I'm a fan, I've seen your shit. People from Ireland, people from fucking Northern California, from fucking, like I said, different parts of the country. That's so, hard. And I was like, fuck, this just, oh, people actually fucking, like, I'm actually doing something. Maybe it's small to just the festival, but people are actually fucking engaging. People are down. So um, that was so motivating. And then when I had the vision with Brockhampton and Preachella and everything in my head, I'm like, oh, I want to throw a good show. But I wasn't even thinking for me. I was thinking for... Why, why, why doesn't the, someone in the valley do a badass show with local artists like yeah. that's what I was that, I wanted to help you guys and um, I hit you up for the show too because I wanted some of the f- people that were pre cello like I was blown away like I didn't know Mike Lavish was that hard and shit yeah, and then, like your performance was badass you had like the whole crowd in a circle and shit and yeah. I was like this is fucking cool. dope bro like we just need a good production yeah. and then um, boom doing the shows and then kind of becoming a promoter by accident I was like, this is fucking bad, bro. Like, I want to <laughs> keep doing shows. Like, this is, and it, and now I have something. So that's when I dropped. Um, I told I was doing weddings and commercials for like restaurants and shit. That's when I dropped everything. And I was like, only music, only music. Like, I, I haven't taken any gigs. Like, people hit me up for videos, and I just outsource them to my homies that make videos. Cause I want all any editing that I'm doing to be focused on the music or personal channel. Going on? 
because you can't do it all unless you have a big team. If I had a big team, fuck it, like let me take that wedding and do all this other bullshit. But I want to focus more music and content. Damn. Yeah. Well, it's dope, bro. Everything that's going on, even like the just all of it that comes full circle. What you were explaining, it's it's crazy to see, and I'm ready to see what's next for sure. Yeah. Nah, like I said, um, just bigger shows and um, staying consistent in the, the Coachella content. So that's what's going to be coming up for the next few months. I might do a show. So I, turn, I turned 30 January 27, this, oh, okay. this January. So I might do a show for my birthday. Jeez. I just don't know, though. I, don't, I have no plans here. I, I was thinking like doing a big ass show. But then I was like, I, I might rather do the, the three people show, like something yeah, smaller. Yeah, small, yeah, I, um, I, I don't have anything on concrete yet, so. And I don't know. And then I also want to start working rock band. So, like, I'm a, I think after. Actually, I should start planning this soon. Before the holidays, I'm going I'm to see if I can plan it before the holidays so that way people don't get booked. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Probably, yeah. That'll because, work out because, like, I'm I'm gonna be planning to do a lot of stuff out of town, and I'm sure a lot of people are gonna be doing that too. So to get them early, you know, like before they make future plans. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And also uh, another big thing, I want to do shows around Coachella, bro, like in April. Ooh, see that'd be hard. Because there's, Cause there's already people here. People, a hundred thousand people <laughs> in the valley wanting to party, bro. Just fucking yeah. shows. Like what are Local they gonna artists, do within bro. the week before the next Coachella weekend? Yep. Go to that show. Party. Throwing stagecoach, bro. A lot of people want to party, but don't want to go to stagecoach. But um, we're throwing a show today. Fucking badass from country. It's all country shit. Some country shit. <laughs> 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 Bring your horses, dog. For real, bro. But shit, thanks, thanks for hopping on the pod. It's been dope. Fucking, um, it's a journey, bro. Going from like the beginning until all the way to present day. Yeah, I've done fucking over a thousand videos, probably at this point. When it comes uh, to like shorts and full production, like it. And fucking eighty percent of them suck, but there's yeah, you just get better, bro. Yeah, like, that's what you do. Yeah, and just fucking do it. That's what I'm saying. Just gotta do it. That's why I'm, I'm gonna jump into the music, even if I suck at first, or maybe I'm badass at first, or like you know, I don't know. Yeah. But I'm gonna fucking try it. And yeah. I mean, you never know unless you try it. So just gotta try get it. Get that shit. Yeah. Thanks right. again for hopping on, dog. Well, thank you, bro. And then I'll have you on the podcast um, whenever you wanna. Once you're doing the green school review and all that Ooh. shit, we'll do some shit. I want to do some music videos with you too. Hell yeah, that's for good. sure. Yeah, we'll work on some shit. All right, thank you guys for I'm watching. Like and subscribe.